All praises. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless you all. Brothers and sisters online. All praises to the most high. Happy Sabbath to you all. Okay, another glorious day to learn. Take your notes. Take your Bibles. You understand? We're going to go into another edition of the truth that will set you free this day. Okay, all praises to the most high. All praises. Okay, we ready, brothers? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises to the most high. All praises. Okay, give me that in John 8.32. Let's start there. You know how we do, we know how we do. John 8.32. John 8.32, okay? The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Brothers and sisters, you want to know the truth, you want to learn the truth this day, and the truth shall make you free. As always, okay, give me Psalms 119, verse 142. Let's understand what the truth is according to the scriptures. Okay, because our Lord and Savior was talking to the disciples, was talking to our forefathers during the time of Rome, and he's talking to us this day. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. We're going here to find out what the truth is according to the Bible. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? Thy law is the truth. The truth is God's commandments. The truth is God's laws. Okay, give me that in Romans chapter 2. Okay. No, 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 Psalms 119. Give me Psalms 119. I think it's 151. Let me hear it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151. Go ahead. Thou art near, O Lord. Read. And all thy commandments are truth. And what? And all thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are what? And all thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are truth. So the truth is God's commandments. The truth is not politics. The truth is not Christianity. Certainly the truth is not white Jesus. Why Jesus is not the truth is a lie. That's the image of Satan. Okay. Read again verse 151. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151. Read. Thou art near, O Lord. The Lord is near unto us. He's not near unto all nations. He's near unto the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. And all thy commandments are true. And all thy commandments are what? And all thy commandments are true. And all thy commandments are truth. Give me that in Romans chapter 2 now. Romans chapter 2. Read verse 18. Okay. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 18. No, 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 read verse 20. Verse 20. That's what I want. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 20. Read. An instructor of the foolish. We are the instructor of the foolish. The foolish of our people who don't know this truth. God, because we used to be there. Hold that. Give me that in Titus 3, verse 3. Because we used to be there. We used to be foolish also. We didn't know what the hell was going on. Was confused and lost in the source. But because of the mercy of our Lord and Savior, we know what the truth is now. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We ourselves were always sometimes foolish. What does it mean to be foolish? Give me that in 1 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 13. Take notes. Make sure you take notes. Take good notes, okay? 1 Samuel 13, verse 13. Come on. First book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 13. We are going here to explain what it means to be foolish. Read. And someone said to Saul, uh -huh. Thou hast done foolish. Thou hast done what? Thou hast done foolish. Thou hast done foolishly. Go ahead. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord. That's what, it, that's what it means to be foolish. To be foolish means not to keep God's commandments. So go back to where he was at now. Okay. Titus 3, verse 3. Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We were sometimes foolish. We were not keeping God's commandments. Read. Disobedience. We were disobedience to the laws of God. Right? Deceived. We were deceived by our own wickedness. Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. We were deceived by our own wickedness. You understand? Because we're in the midst of sin. We're much evil in the sight of our mother of the most high God of heaven and earth. Okay? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 2.21. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 21. Read. Right. Such things they did imagine. These things we did imagine on our minds. Read. Right? And were deceived. And we were deceived. Come on. For their own wickedness. For our own what? For their own wickedness. Because our own wickedness and what? Have blinded them. You see that thing? That's what he's saying right there. We were deceived by our own wickedness. And we are blinded our, by our own wickedness. Go back to Titus 3 verse 3. Now we better have a better understanding what the Apostle Paul is saying. Titus 3 verse 3. Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We were sometimes foolish. We keep, we're not keeping the laws of God. Read. Disobedient. We were disobedient to God's commandments, to the most high God of heaven and earth. Read. Deceived. We were deceived by our own wickedness. Read. 
saving diverse lust. We were saving diverse lust. First John 2 verse 15. We we're saving diverse lusts. Okay. He's going to explain what those diverse lusts are. Where are they found? Read that. First John 2 15. Watch this. Come on. First book of John. Chapter 2 verse 15. Read. Love not the world. Love not the world. So the subject matter is the, the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Come on. If any man love the world. If any man love the world. Okay, come on. The love of the Father is not in him. So when we love the things that are in the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Read. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world is going to tell you what's in the world that God has commanded us that we must not love. Read. The lust of the flesh. That's why it says diverse lust and pleasures. The lust of the flesh. Come on. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. We lust things with our eyes, with our flesh. We want, we, we want to fulfill. You see, our, our flesh, our bodies, they always want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. When the spirit says no, the flesh says yes, I want. I want, I want. Go ahead. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. Okay, read. Is not of the Father. That's not of the most High God of heaven and earth. Read. But is of the world. But is of Satan. Is of the world. Go back to Titus now. Now we understand what Christ was saying in John 8, 32. You understand? We must know the truth, brothers and sisters. And the truth shall make us free. Because we're not free, we're still slaves. We are in captivity. We are in slavery as a people right now. Understand that thing. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Read. Disobedient. Mm. Deceived. Deceived, come on. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Diverse lusts and pleasures that are found in the world which are not of the Father, but of Satan. Read. Living in malice and envy. Living in malice and envy. Envying one another. Come on. Hateful. Hateful. And hating one another. You see that? We were hateful and hating each other. That, that, that's what we're doing. That's why now the Lord is... The, because of what Christ did, Christ taught us that we must love one another. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brother. Don't have hate, don't hate hated towards your brother. Apply the royal law. Treat your brother like royalty. You understand? Because we were given the royal law to teach each other with respect and honor because we have never learned to do that. We honor the other nations, but we don't honor each other. Them days are over. We beg the Lord has his mercy upon us. Read that part again. It says what? Hateful. Hateful and hating one another. Hateful and hating one another. Come on. But after the kindness and love of God, mm. our Savior toward men appeared. You see that when Christ was on the earth. Read. Not by works of righteousness. Not by work, not by our works of righteousness. Come on. Which we have done. Which we have done. Read. But according to his mercy, he but saved us. But according to his what? But according to his mercy, mm. he saved us. You see that thing? It's not because of all these glorious things we did. Mm -mm. It's because of his mercy that he saved us. Now the Lord is saving us spiritually so that he can later when his son returns, he can deliver us physically from the lands of our captivities. That's what we're reading here. You understand? So go back now. Go back to Romans 2 verse 20. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 20. Come on. An instructor of the foolish. An instructor of the foolish. Come on. Because yeah. we were the foolish. Okay. Read. A teacher of babes. A teacher of babes. Because we're still young in this truth. Read. Which has the form of knowledge. The form of knowledge is the Holy Bible. Come on. And of the truth. And in, of the what? And of the truth. Great. In the law. You see that the truth of God is found in his commandments, in his laws. So go back now to John 8.32. We have a better understanding what Christ is saying. This will not be the graveyard shift. Okay. Come on. The book of John chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And we. Who is he talking to? Jump up to the verse before it. John 8 verse 30. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 30. Read. And he spake these words. Mm. Many believed on him. This is Christ speaking. He says, he spake these words and many believed on him. Read. Then said Jesus to those Jews. To those what? To those Jews. No, he was talking to everybody. He was teaching everyone. To those Jews. To the Jews that was in Jerusalem. Today he's talking to the Jews that are scattered on the four corners of the earth among all these nations. Saving hard bondage. Read. Which believed on him. Which believed on Christ. Come on. If ye continue in my word. If we continue. Not only must you hear it. But you must continue in the word of the Lord. Read. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Then we are truly Christ's disciples. If we continue. This is not where you start and stop. No you start you continue. You stay in it. You be in it. 
to win it. That's what they say in the world, right? Be in it to win it. Mm -hmm. Now, give me that in 3 John. Give me 3 John real quick, okay? If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Give me 3 John verse 1. Watch this. Come on. 3 book of John verse 1. Read. The elder, the elder unto the well beloved Gaius. Gaius, go ahead. Whom I love in the truth. Read. Whom I what? Whom I love in the truth. In the what? In the truth. In the law. Whom I love in the law, which you shall know, and it will make you free. Whom I love in the truth. So you cannot be in, you must be in the truth to know the truth. Read. Beloved, mm. I wish above all things. He says, whom I want in the truth. Read that verse again. Read the part again. That book of John, verse 1. Read. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, mm. whom I love in the truth. Whom I love in the truth. Go ahead. Beloved, mm. I wish above all things Read. that thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest what? That thou mayest prosper. And for us to prosper, we must keep God's laws. You're not going to prosper because when you have a medical degree, that's not prosperity. You're not going to prosper because when you are an engineer. No, no, no. You will prosper because you keep the laws of God. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. That's where you get your success from. The reason why our people are they, they are not, we are not prosperous as a nation, we are not successful as a nation, is because we are not keeping the laws of God. You understand, understand that? Give me Joshua 1 of his 8. Because some people don't understand what I'm saying. You understand? They don't understand what, what we're reading here in 3 John. Let's get it in Joshua 1 and 8. Come on. Let's understand what it means to prosper. Let's understand what it means to be successful according to the most High God. This is God's formula of, for success. Read. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. This book of the law. This book of the what? This book of the law. This book of the law. No, this book of engineering. This book of the law. No, this medical book. This book of the law. This book of medicine. This book of the law. This book of the law. This book, no engineering mechanics. This book of the law. No, no, quantum mechanics. This book of the law. Theory of relativity. This book of this the law. This book of the law. This book of the law. This Bible right here. Go ahead. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's a commandment. It shall not depart out of your mouth. Read. But thou shall meditate therein day and night. But you must meditate in it day and night. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You see that you must do, you must observe to do according to all that's written in it. Read. For then. Because then once you do that, you meditate. First, the book must not depart out of your mouth. You must meditate in it day and night. You must observe to do all that is written therein. Then once you do all that, what's happen, what happens next? For then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then you're going to make your way prosperous. You see where prosperity come from? Prosperity come from you keeping the laws of God. Meditating on God's commandments. Read. And then, thou shalt have good success. Then you're going to have what? And then, thou shalt have good success. And then shalt thou have good success. That's where success come from. Success come from... Men and women obeying God's laws. Because when we were in the world, we were doing all these, these um, degrees and whatnot, but we were not successful. You thought you were successful. They said, no, he's got two PhDs. No, nigga, you're not successful. You understand? You still don't know who you are, but you, you know how to split an atom. formula. But you don't know who you are, who your God is, where you come from, how to come out of the conditions you're in. So your degree is useless. Your degree don't mean nothing. Imagine a full-blown professor, but you don't know who he is. You're a full-blown professor in, in university. He still don't know who he is. A medical doctor, a surgeon, but he don't know his Israel. You understand? When the day is done at the hospital, where does he go? He go to busy corner. You understand? He go to tease us. He sleeps with prostitutes. He's got one night stands. You understand? That's not man, that's not a man or woman that's successful. You understand? Because today our brothers and sisters they hide behind their degrees. Your de degree don't mean nothing. Your degree don't mean nothing in the sight of the most high God if you're not keeping these commandments. That's not like being successful. You understand? And I know what you're saying right now. Yeah, but you know how we survive. Yeah, God says we must get a job. You understand? Use some common sense because you have a degree in it. Use that common sense with that degree you got. 
We are showing you what the Lord is saying, what it means to be successful as a nation. We keep and obey his commandments. That's it. Once we do that, everything else will follow. Give me that in, um, is it Matthew 6, verse 33? Read that for me. Okay. We need to understand the, success, the formula for success. We just read it in Joshua 1 and 8. Okay. The formula for success is not, um, you know, go to school, get a degree, and get paid. That's not the end. And do la kokazi and buy a BMW. The BMW is more expensive than the house you live in. That's not being successful. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Go ahead. But seek ye first. Be, whoa, 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 whoa. What? But do what? But seek ye first. But, but seek, seek ye, ye first. first. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the first thing you must seek. The kingdom of God. Read. And his righteousness. And his what? And his righteousness. His righteousness is his commandments. Deuteronomy 6.25. Get that real quick. We need to understand this thing. I know some of you brothers or brothers and sisters online, we're not saying don't, we're not saying don't go to school. Go to school, of course, but your degree must benefit your nation. You understand? Because many of our brothers and sisters in the world, they've got degrees, but you know what they do with those degrees? They buy expensive cars and they floss. They want people to see them because it's about you. It's not about your nation. You want people to see that whenever you drive a Ferrari, you drive a Bentley, to hell with you and your Bentley. If your degree don't benefit your nation, then to hell with you and your degree. Repent, come back into this truth, and help us. You understand? Read again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Read. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments. If we observe to do all these commandments. Read. Before the Lord our God, uh -huh. as he has commanded as us. As he has commanded us. Go back to where he was at. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Read. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But seek ye first. First. That's the first thing you must seek. The kingdom of God. Go ahead. And his righteousness. And his what? And his righteousness. And his righteousness. Come on. And all these things shall be added unto you. And all these things shall be added unto you. What are all these things? Whatever degrees you got and all that. Yeah, that's secondary. But number one. The keeping of the laws of God. That's number one. You want to be attractive in the sight of God? Keep the commandments. You want the most high to love you? Keep God's commandments. You understand? Understand that. Go back to John now. Go back to John 8.32. No, 8.31. You see, that thing right, that John 8.31, John 8.30, that's a heavy, heavy verse right there. John 8.32. Read again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Read. Then said Jesus to those Jews mm -hmm. which believed on him. Which what? Which believed on him. Which believe on him. Come on. If ye continue in my word. If you continue in the word of God, what's going to happen? Then are ye my disciples indeed. Then are you, are you his disciples indeed. So Christ says we're going to only be his disciples if we continue in the word that he taught us. The commandments that he taught us, when we continue in them, he says then are we his disciples indeed. But watch this. There's something actually. There's a scripture actually I want to go to. I think it's in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, okay? Watch this. Yep, yep. 2 Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 20. Watch this. 2 Chronicles 24, verse 20. I'm going to show you something here. You need to understand the heaviness of what we're reading. You understand? Success comes through the keeping of God's laws. I don't know what the white man taught you. I don't know what they lied to you at university because they lied to me too. You understand? Read that. Second Chronicles 24, verse 20. Read. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 20. Come on. And the Spirit of God mm. came upon Zacharias. The Spirit of God came upon Zacharias. Come on. The son of Jehoiada, the priest. Read. Which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, why transgress ye? Why do what? Why transgress ye? Why transgress ye? The subject matter here is the transgression of God's laws. The breaking of God's commandments. What is that? Sin. Sin is the breaking of God's laws. Read. Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord? Uh -huh. That ye cannot prosper. That ye cannot what? That ye cannot prosper. You see, when we don't, the reason why we don't prosper as a nation is because we're transgressing God's commandments. I don't care how many times you can toy toy, how many times you can march, 
But if the people that are marching, they are not on one accord. You understand? Because on Sunday, they go to different churches because they've been divided in religion and politics. They go to different places to worship. They don't worship the one true God of heaven and earth. You understand? Guess what? That much is useless. That much is pointless. You understand? Because you have, you have, you have in the U.S. the million men march. You understand? Louis Farrakhan, he did that years ago. Million men march. But all of them were not, in one, were not on one accord. They were all worshipping different things. They all came together, but they were all worshipping different things. The million men march didn't really do nothing for us. Now we just had another march now recently with the EFF. But yes, they were all wearing red and all, but they were not in one mind. Because on Sunday, they go to different churches to worship white Jesus. The same place where the slave master has divided us. You see what I'm saying? So if we can put all that energy in the keeping of God's laws, that's power right there. Understand that? Psalm 68 verse 35. Watch this. Psalm 68 verse 35. Understand, because brothers and sisters now learn, ah, but now he's knocking the EFM. I'm not knocking the EFM. What I am saying though is this. What I'm saying is that when they are, when we are, when if we can do that and we all keeping God's commandments, there's power in that. There's, there's power in that thing. Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 35. Read. Oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy place. Thou art terrible in thy holy places. Go ahead. The God of Israel. The God of Israel. See, the most High God of heaven and earth, he's not the God of all nations. He never, he's never been the God of all nations. He will never be the God of all nations on earth. He's only the God of Israel and none else. Read, and he's a black man, by the way. Go ahead. The God of Israel mm -hmm. is he that giveth strength and power. Is he that giveth what? Is he that giveth strength and power. You see, the God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power. Come on. Unto his people. Unto all nations. Unto his people. Unto his people. Who are God's people? Matthew 2 verse 6. Is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Okay, brothers, I'm going to need you to look something up for me. Okay, something just... You know, popped into my head. Read them. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. And thou, Bethlehem, mm. in the land of Judah, come on, and not the least among the princes of Judah. Go ahead. For out of thee shall come a governor. Because out of thee shall come a governor, come on, that shall rule my people Israel. Who's God's people? That shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule my people Israel. God's people is the 12 tribes of Israel scattered around the world. Now give me Wisdom of Solomon 6. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. Get the definition of sovereignty. Sovereignty. Get the definition of sovereignty and show it on the screen. Okay? Get that. So now, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 3, come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. Go ahead. For power is given you of the Lord. You see, if we want power upon this earth, we want power to rule all nations on earth. What needs to happen? For power is given you of the Lord. For power is given you of the Lord. Go ahead. And sovereignty from the higher. And what? And sovereignty from the higher. If we want power and sovereignty upon this earth, it's going to come from the most High God. And the only way it's going to come is through us doing what? Keeping the laws of God. Read. Who shall try your words? And search out your counsels. Now get the definition of sovereignty. Read that. Put it on the screen so the people can see it. The definition of sovereignty. Okay. Do the people see it? I want the people to see this thing. Come on. Yes. Read it. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Read it. Definition of sovereignty. Go ahead. Supreme power or authority. Supreme power or authority. So God is the one, the most high God of heaven and earth. He's the one that's going to give us supreme power or what? Supreme power or authority. You see, supreme power or authority. Read the next definition. Watch this. Definition two. Uh -huh. The authority of a state to govern itself or another state. You see that the authority of a state to govern itself. Or another state. Because guess what? The most high God of heaven and earth is the one that's going to give us our sovereignty.
to rule all nations on earth with power and might and with a rod of iron. That's what we're reading here. If we want that, guess what? It's only going to come through us keeping the laws of God. Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 3 again. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3. Read. For power is given you of the Lord. For power is given you of the Lord. Go ahead. And sovereign. And what? And sovereign. Supreme power or authority over all nations on earth. You understand? That's what he's talking about right there. Read again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. Read. For power is given you of the Lord, uh -huh. and sovereignty from the highest. And sovereignty from the highest. Go ahead. Who shall try your works, and search out your counsel. You see that thing? The Lord tries our works, and he searches out our counsels. Okay? Now, go back to John 8.32 now. John 8.32. I'm showing you how, how deep this verse is. John 8.32. We want deliverance. We must continue in the word of God. Understand that. Read. John 8.32. Come on. The book of John. Chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And we shall know the truth. Which will give us what? Power. Supreme power and authority over all nations on earth. Read. And the truth shall make you free. Because when, for us to have sovereignty, we must be delivered first. You're, gonna, you're not going to have sovereignty without deliverance. For sovereignty to come, we must be delivered from the hands of our enemies. I need you men and women to understand that thing. Okay? Now, watch this. Now, tonight's class is called The Depths of Satan. The Depths of Satan. That's tonight's topic. The Depths of Satan. Okay, give me Psalm 7 verse 10. Let's get into it. Psalms chapter 7 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. My defense is of God, mm. which saveth the upright in heart. Read again. My defense is of God. My, our defense comes from the Most High. The only one that defends us from our enemies is God of heaven and earth. The God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the one that defends us from our enemies. Read that again, verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 10. Read. My defense is of God, mm -hmm. which saveth the upright in heart. The Lord saveth the upright in heart. Watch this. I'm going to give an example of what happened in the past. How the Lord delivered us from the hands of our enemies. Watch this. Give me Luke 1, verse 68 first. Okay. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. I'm going to show you something. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He's here like the son of that thing. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He's not the God of all nations. He's the God of Israel and none else. Verse 71, come on. Verse 71. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we, that we, the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, we should be what? That we should be saved from our enemies. We should be saved from our enemies, come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. You understand? We should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Read again. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Okay, come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies, come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. I'm going to show you what happened in the past. How the Lord delivered us from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Give me the book of Isaiah 37. You understand? Isaiah chapter 37, verse 33. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 37, verse 33. Read. Therefore, that says the Lord God mm. concerning the kings, the king of Assyria. Concerning the what? Concerning the king of Assyria. Because the Assyrian king, this is Sennacherib. You understand? Sennacherib sent his captain, Rabshakeh, to come and intimidate us during the time of Hezekiah the king. But watch what happens here. Read again. Verse 33. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 33. Read. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria. Read. Ye shall not come into the city, mm. nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield. Read. Nor cast a bank against it. That's what the Lord is saying concerning the king of Assyria. Go ahead. By the way that he came, mm. by the same shall he return. You see, the Lord says he's not going to do nothing. Read. Ye shall not come into the city, Save the Lord. Save the what? Save the Lord. Save the most high God of heaven and earth. Read. 
For I will defend the city. For I will what? For I will defend the city. For I will what? For I will defend the city. For I will defend the city. The Lord says he will defend the city of Jerusalem. The Lord is the one that defends us. He says, I'm going to defend you. Read again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 35. Read. For I will defend the city. I will defend this city. Come on. To save it for my own sake. Read. And for my servant David's sake. You see what the Lord is saying? So our defense comes from the Lord. And he's going to show you how he defended us. Read. Then the angel of the Lord went forth mm. and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. The angel of the Lord came into the camp of the Assyrians to do what? And smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. Hundred and eighty-five thousand men were put to death by the angel of the Lord. Hundred and eighty-five thousand men, men of war, they were put to death by the angel. Read. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. They were all what? They were all dead corpses. They were all dead corpses because the Lord delivered us. Read. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Read. And it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nishrog, his god. Nishrog, his idol. Read. That Adramalek that Adramalek and Shareza, Shareza go ahead. his sons mm. smote him with the sword mm. and they escaped in the land of Armenia. So they put him to death. He was killed by his own sons. Understand? That's how the Lord deals with his nations when they mess with us. The same thing that Pharaoh, when Pharaoh messed with us, what happened to the Egyptians? They drowned in the Red Sea. The Lord drowned the Egyptians for our sakes. You see, God don't play when it comes to us. He kills the nations to defend us. Give me Zechariah chapter 9, verse 15. Okay, I'm showing you how the Lord defends us. Read. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 15. Come on. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 15. Read. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. The Lord of hosts shall what? The Lord of hosts shall defend them. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. The Lord defends us. Go ahead. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink mm. and make a noise as through wine. Mm. And they shall be filled like bowls. They shall be filled like what? Like bowls. The Lord, what is the Lord is telling us here? He's, tell, he's telling us that he's going to give us power to put these nations to what? We might, we're going to put these nations to death. That's what he's saying. This is when the Lord returns. Jump up to verse 12. Watch this. Verse 12. Because who is he talking to here? Who is he talking about? He's talking about Judah and Israel. All 12 tribes of Israel. Read. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 12. Read. Turn you to the stronghold. We must turn to the strongholds. The stronghold is this Bible. The Bible is the stronghold. Come on. He prisoners of hope. Because we prisoners of hope. Because our people, they're always hoping. And nothing changes. You know why? Because we don't put our trust in the Lord as a nation. Now that we're coming into this truth, we're understanding where our power is. Read. Even today, mm. do I declare that I will render double unto thee. The Lord is going to render double unto us. Come on. When I have bent Judah for me. He's going to bend Judah. Come on. Fill the bow with Ephraim. And fill the bow with Ephraim. Read. And raise up thy sons, O Zion. And raise up our sons, O Zion. That's what the Lord is doing right now in the spirit. Read. Against thy sons, O Greek. Against thy sons, O Mr. White Man, Esau, Edom, Idumia. Read. And make thee as the sword of a mighty man. The Lord is going to make Judah and Ephraim as the sword of a mighty man. Because we are the army of, we are God's army. I need you men to understand that we are God's army. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go back to Psalm 7 verse 10. I was showing you some examples of what the Lord did for us. When he defended us. Okay. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 10. Go ahead. My defense is of God. My defense is of God because the Lord defends us. He defends his people. Read. Which saveth the upright in heart. The Lord saved the upright in heart. Go ahead. Verse 12. Come on. Verse, verse, 12. verse 11. Verse 11. Read. God judges the righteous. Mm -hmm. And God is angry with the wicked every day. Read that again. The book of Psalms chapter 7 verse 11. Read. 
God judges the righteous. God judges the righteous. The righteous is those that keep God's laws. Read. Right? And God is angry with the wicked every day. Who is the wicked that the Lord says is angry with every day? Give me that in Malachi 1 verse 4. God is angry with the wicked every day. Some heavy stuff, man. Okay. This, this is, is talking about the, the wicked. He's going into the wicked. But he's also going into the wicked of our people that don't want to repent. He's also angry with them every day. But the wicked is talking about who? It's talking about Esau, Edom. Let's find out if that's true. Read it. The book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Really? Where else Edom saith, mm. we are in poverty. We are what? We are in poverty. Edom. Edom is the subject. Esau, Edom says, they are impoverished. They are poor. Read. But we will return and build the desolate places. But they said they will return and build the desolate places. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build. Esau, Edom will build. Go ahead. But I will throw down. The Lord says it, but he's going to throw down. He's going to destroy what they are building. Everywhere you see on the earth, they are building cities. City after city, they are building. Okay, go ahead. And they shall call them. They're going to call Esau, Edom. The border of wickedness. The what? The border of wickedness. A border is an is a edge. is a beginning and end of something. So Esau, Edom is going to be called the border of wickedness. They begin, give me that wisdom of Solomon. Let me show you what it means when it says the Esau is going to be called. This white man is called the border of wickedness. Meaning they are the wicked. The Bible speaks of. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Read verse 27. Watch this. I'm going to show you some. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 27. Go ahead. For the worshipping of idols. For the worshipping of what? For the worshipping of idols. For the worshipping of idols. Come on. Not to be laid. Not to be not to be bowed down to. Go ahead. Is the beginning. Is the what? Is the beginning. Is the beginning. The cause. The cause. And the end of all evil. The border of wickedness. So who is the border of wickedness upon this earth? Who is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil on earth? The wicked. Esau, Edom. Go back to Malachi 1 verse 4. Malachi 1 verse 4. I'm showing you something spiritual here. Okay. Watch this. Come on. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Whereas Edom said, Read. We are impoverished. They said they are poor. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate place. Because during the dark ages they were poor. During the dark ages they were living in the Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. Read. That says the Lord of hosts. Mm. They shall build. They're going to build their cities back. Go ahead. But I will throw down. The Lord says he's going to destroy them. Read. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. The beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Read. And the people. Not, the, the, not the person. And the people. No, the individual. And, and the people. The nation. Go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. The Lord says he's got indignation against them forever. Now go back to Psalm 7 verse 11 now. Psalms chapter 7 verse 11. The book of Psalms chapter 7 verse 11. Read. Really? God judges the righteous. No, no, no. Actually, you know what? Go back to, give me Job 9.24. He says, they shall call them the poor of wickedness. Okay. Read it. Job 9.24. The book of Job chapter 9 verse 24. Watch this. Because her man. Brothers, get ready those pictures, all right? Job 9.24, come on. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Read. Really? Because a man. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Apology, sir. No, no. Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Come on. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. You see that? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, who God is angry with every day. You understand? Read. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Into the hand of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau Edom. A.K. also known as the Caucasian race. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So what did this white man do? What did he do? He covered the faces of the judges thereof. He covered the faces of the judges. He has covered the faces of the judges thereof. You understand? So I'm going to show you how he covered the faces of the judges. Because who are the judges of the earth? 
We the judges of the earth. Israel, we are the judges of the earth. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 6 and 1. We are the judges of the earth. It says, this white man has covered the faces of the judges. Okay? Let's see. Read them. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Dare any of you, having a matter against another. Read, meaning we have issues against one another. Go ahead. Go to the law before the unjust. Go ahead. And not before the saints. Read. Do you not know? Do you not know? Come on. That the saints shall judge the world. That the what? That the saints shall judge the world. The saints shall judge the world. The saints are the judges of the earth. Who are the saints? Give me Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are. The saints shall judge the world. He says, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Who are the saints that shall judge the world? Read them. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. The horn of his people, meaning a leader. Christ our Lord and Savior. Come on. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. Indeed of the children of Israel. Come on. A people near unto him. Read. Praise ye the Lord. So who the saints? The judges of the earth. The twelve tribes of Israel. Okay. Go back now. Job 9.24. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Read. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, the white man. The white man right now, he rules the whole planet earth. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So the, the Bible says he covered the faces of the Israelites because that's who the saints are. He covered the faces of the Israelites. First Maccabees 3.48. I went over this last week with you. I'm going to go over it again because this is your, this is, this history right here. You must understand it. You must know it. It must be forged and edged into your brain. It must sink into your ears this day. Read it. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And laid open the book of the law. And laid open the Greeks. The Greeks opened the book of the law. Come on. Where in the heathen. Where in the what? Where in the heathen. The heathen is the Greeks in this context. What did they do? Had sought to paint the likeness of their image. So they whitewashed our images in the Bible. They were sought to erase our presence in the Holy Bible. They did it through images. Now they're doing it with all these different versions of the Bible that they are pushing out. You understand? To take verses out, to change the wordings in the Bible. That's what the white man is doing. He is covering the faces of the judges. Understand that. Okay. Now, the first page. Give, the, give me the picture of our Lord and Savior. Give me the picture of the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Blow it up big so they can see it. Blow it up. Yes. That's it right there. That's the Messiah right there. Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Watch this. This is the biblical description of what our Lord and Savior look like. Okay, Christ the Messiah. Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is John, the revelator, speaking here. Go ahead. And heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. Read. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. Come on. The first and the last. Read. And what thou seest. And what you see, John, with your eyes. Because, you know how many times when we were at camp, they say, no, John was, um, he was dreaming. He didn't know what he was seeing. Well, he's not seeing with his eyes. Christ says what you see with your eyes. You understand? Read. Write in a book. He says record it. Well, go ahead. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Uh -huh, in Asia Minor. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 12. Mm. And I tend to see the voice that spake with me. And he says I tend to see the voice to see the voice that spake with me. Go ahead. And being ten, mm -hmm. I saw seven golden candles. No, no, no. I was dreaming. I saw seven golden candles. He saw. He saw how many candlesticks? I saw seven golden candles. The menorah. That's what you see on the screen right there. Move me out. I want to see the Messiah. Why am I there? Move me out. Yeah, that's it right there. I want to see the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read it again. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Uh -huh. And being ten. What did he see? I saw seven golden candlesticks. Look at him. Mm, I'm jumping ahead. 
He saw how many candlesticks? I saw seven golden candlesticks. He saw seven golden candlesticks. That's what you see on the screen, brothers and sisters. Mm, the menorah. Keep going. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. In the middle of the seven candlesticks, what did he see? One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the what? One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Okay? So, because, you know, at camp, you know, they, you know, it's crazy. Whenever we're at camp, there's always this super Christian sitting in some corner somewhere, smoking weed. Hmm? You understand? Wearing, um, wearing tight pants and skinny jeans. You understand? And pink shoes. Because that's, that's always them with blonde hair, pink hair, green hair. That it's always them. You understand? He says, one like what? One like unto the son of man. They say, but yeah, I see it's not him. He says, one like. John is seeing this man. He's seeing Christ 60, almost 63 years later. You understand? He's seeing this man. He says, wait a minute. Wait. Hey, this looks like the son of man. So what is John describing? The son of man. Get it? He's describing the son of man. Now, give me that in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Yeah, verse 13. Watch this. This Christ speaking here. Pay attention. Listen to what he's saying. Go ahead. The book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Watch this. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea. So this is Christ. He says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, what happened? Philippi. Uh -huh. He asked his disciples, say, What did he say? Read. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? You see that he's telling you who he is, the son of man. He's telling you, he, he says, I'm the son of man. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So he's telling you, I'm the son of man. So, meaning, he is the son of a man. Now, watch how this comes together. John 6, 41. Pay close attention, soldier Bezalel. Watch how this comes together. He says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, read that. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 41. Go ahead. Then the Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Okay, read. And they said... Okay, hold on. Read again. Let me get it. Let me get it. Read again. John 6, 41. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 41. Watch this. The Jews then murmured at him. And they murmured. Jews were murmuring. Because you know, people are always complaining. Read. Because he said, because Christ said what? I am the bread which came down from heaven. So he said, he's the bread that came down from heaven. But watch this. And they said, mm. is not this Jesus? Is not this Jesus? The son of Joseph. The what? The son of Joseph. He told you, he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? You see how this comes together? Okay, go ahead. Whose father and mother we know. Whose father and mother we know. Go ahead. How is it then uh -huh. that he said, I came down from heaven? How did he, how does he say, wait a minute, we know his mother. We know his father. Why is he saying, I came down from heaven? But in the Christian church, it's vice versa. In the Christian church, they say, he came from an angel. He came down from heaven. You understand? He wasn't born like us. And they don't know who his mother and father is. But back then, our four parents, they knew his father and his mother, and they knew he didn't fall from the sky. You see, Christianity is of the devil. It's vice versa. Read that again, verse 42. John 6. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 42. Go ahead. And they said, uh -huh. is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph. The what? The son of Joseph. Is not, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Whose father and mother we know. Whose father and mother we know. We know his parents. Read. We know Mary was pregnant. He was born. Read. How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? Okay. Now go back now. Okay. Read that again. Matthew 16. Chapter of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. Watch this. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. he asked his disciples, saying, Read. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He's telling you, he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? 
I am the son of Joseph and Mary. You see how this comes together, brothers? Because yes, Rolebe Zilero was asking about this this day. So we went over it, but now we're getting more understanding this day. Okay, so go back. Revelation 1, verse 12. Okay, watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Mm -hmm. And being ten, I saw seven golden candlesticks. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Go ahead. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, uh -huh. one like unto the Son of Man. Whose father and mother we know. You see that thing? Go ahead. Clothed with a garment uh -huh. down to the foot. He was wearing a beautiful long garment. Now that's what you see on the screen. Go ahead. And get about the peps with a golden gown. He was wearing a gold belt around his waist. Look at him. A beautiful black man. He's black and beautiful. Go ahead. His head and his hair. His hair and his hairs were white like wool. Now he's describing what this man looks like. He says he is described. He's in the midst of the candlesticks. Not only that, but he's describing what he's wearing. Now he's describing what he looks like. His skin complexion. Okay. Even his the hair on his head. He says what? His head and his hands uh -huh. were white like wood. That's what you're seeing on the screen right there. Look at him. Beautiful Afro hair. Mm. Go ahead. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because of wine. He drank wine in moderation. Read. And his feet mm. like unto fine brass. Now he's looking at his feet. He's looking at the feet of Christ. Go ahead. And like unto what? And his feet. Like unto fine brass. His feet look like brass. Brass is brown. Somebody look up brass. Look up the picture of brass so the people can see. Brass is a brown color. I want you to see what your Lord and Savior look like. This is the most, this is the accurate description of the what we're reading in the Bible. That white image of Jesus is of the devil. That's the image of Satan. You understand? Come on, brothers. Give us the picture. We want the picture of what brass look like. You looking at it? You understand? Brass is right there with the picture of the Messiah. You understand? There it is. Right there. Upload it so the people can see that thing. Now, uh -huh. Yep. Yep, highlight it with the mouse so they see what we're looking at. Right there, right there. That's brass right there. That's brass is brown. Brass is brown. Look at him. That right, you cannot get a white boy out of there. That's brass right there. That is brass. Okay? As if what? Read that part again. And his feet, like unto fine brass. Because the color of your feet is the same color as your face, your arms, and the rest of your body. Read. As if they burned in a fence. Now you take that brass, you burn it. It turns black. You take that brass, you burn it, it turns black. So Christ was so dark-skinned as if he burned in a furnace. You understand? Now, give me the picture of Christ on a horse now. No, on a donkey. Give me the picture of Christ on a donkey. Okay? Walking into Jerusalem. I want the people to see that day. Come on. The people need to see what we what we see. Our people need to understand this stuff. There's a lot of, I'm going to be going over. So pay close attention. Yeah, that's it right there. Show the what book? Show also we I want the people to see the book. The name of the book. You understand? I want the people to see the name of the book. Where are we getting this from? Yeah, that's the book right there. Rulers of Russia. When we ruled in Russia, because we ruled Russia in the Dark Ages. During the Dark Ages, we ruled Russia. Okay? Now go inside the book. Okay? Rulers of Russia. I want you to show Christ on a donkey. That's him right there. Look at him. Look at Christ walking into Jerusalem on a donkey. You understand? A black man. With a halo in his back or behind his back. Look at him. A black man. You understand? Show show the, the one with the good shepherd. Show that real quick. 
Okay, show the writing there so the people can see it. We need to see that writing right there. So the people see where we're reading from. Yeah, that's it right there. So, Neam, can you see it? Yes, sir. Read. Another Christian well painting of the third century portrays Jesus as the good shepherd. It, is a, it does what? Portrays Jesus. It portrays Christ as the what? As the good shepherd. As the good shepherd. Is portraying Christ as the good shepherd. Read on. Tending his flock of sheep. Okay, now read on. The sheep are the symbol of his spiritual children. Because we are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now show the picture. The people must see the good shepherd. Look at him. Look at him right there. A black man. That's Christ right there. He was drawn. You understand? Look at him. Look at him. First century. Black man. You cannot get a white boy out of that. You understand? Now show the next picture. Show the next picture where they are pointing at the Messiah. Okay, during the dark ages. Our forefathers. Because I want the people to even to see the books we read him from. You understand? Show the book. Blow it up some. Okay, that's the book right there. Atlas of the Christian Church. That's the book. Edited by Henry Chadwick and G.R. Evans. Okay, come on. Let's go inside the book. There it is right there. Blow it up some. We're going to read the pink. That highlighted, that part highlighted in pink. I want to see the whole writing because we don't see the whole thing. Can you see? Yes, sir. Okay, read it. In this 11th century manuscript. In this 11th century manuscript. Go ahead. On the right. Go ahead. Illumination. Right. Mm. Iconoclast. Churchmen are shown spearing the image of Christ. You see that? It says iconoclast churchmen. They are shown spearing the image of Christ. The image of Christ. Now show the picture. Come on. That's them, that's them right there. You see the forefathers? They are all black men with halos behind their backs. Look at them. Look at the picture they are pointing at. So show the, picture, the people the picture with the mouse. I want the people to see that. That picture on the right right there. That they are, look, they are pointing at. That picture right there. That's it. Look at the forefathers, man. Look at them. These are all black men. They are looking at the picture of the Messiah. A black man. So you cannot get a white boy out of that. Our forefathers painted these. You understand? 11th century. We was ruling during this time. You understand? Okay. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Okay, go back to First Maccabees 3.48. First Maccabees 3.48. The next picture I want to see is the picture of the angels now. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Go ahead. And let open the book of the law. The Greeks, the white men, they open our books. Read. Where if the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. They sought to paint the likeness of our images. Meaning they whitewash our images. That's what you need to understand. Okay, so now let's show the picture of the angels now. Show the, the, the name of the book. Come on. That's the book right there. Blow it up some. No, no, the writings. We want the title. Yes. Treasures of the world, the rulers of Russia. Go inside the book. Okay, give me Ezekiel 1. We're going to see what the angels look like. Ezekiel chapter 1, read verse 7. Yeah, blow it up so the people can see. Yeah, that's it right there. Right there at the top there. Come on, Ezekiel 1 verse 7. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1 verse 7. Read. And their feet were straight feet. Talk about the angels, come on. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. Read. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. They sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Brass burned in a furnace. Just like Jesus Christ looked, that's how the angels look. Black and beautiful. That's what you see right there. Okay, now raise it up so they can see the picture of the archangel Michael. Okay, and blow it up so the people can see that. Blow it up some. That's it, right? That's the picture of the archangel Michael. Now read that. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. The book of Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 18. Read. 
As for the likeness of the living creatures, the likeness of the living creatures, meaning how they look, how the angels look, right? Their appearance. They are what? Their appearance. The way they look, their complexion, come on. Was like burning coals of fire. Was like burning coals of fire. You know how coals look like? Coal is pitch black. So what you're looking at there is the archangel Michael, which the white man tried to whitewash. But the Lord still make sure that they preserve the images that they try to destroy. You understand? Read that again, verse 13. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 18. Read. As for the likeness of the, of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Was like burning coals of fire. Come on. And like the appearance of lamps. Mm. You see that? Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. That is it. Okay, now... Um, first Maccabees 348. One more again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Read. And laid open the book of the law. Read. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. The heathen sought to paint the likeness of our images. You understand? Okay, that's it on that. Now go back to Psalms, chapter 7, verse 12. Okay, Psalm 7, verse 12. You can take that off the screen now. Psalms chapter 7 verse 12. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 7 verse 12. Read. If he tell not, he will wet his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. That's talk about who? This is talk, this right here is talking about the most side going to de deliver judgment to the wicked. Psalm chapter 7. Read verse 12 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 12. Start of verse 11 so we catch up. Because I know some of you forgot already. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. God judges the righteous. God judges the right. The righteous is those of us that keep the commandments. Read. And God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every single day. Go ahead. If he turn not. He if the wicked does not turn from his wickedness. Read. He will wet his sword. The Lord will wet his sword, prepare judgment for him. Read. He has bent his bow uh -huh. and made it ready. And made it ready for judgment. Isaiah 34 verse 5. He's bent his bow and made it ready. No, 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 no. Isaiah, Isaiah 34 verse 5. Read that real quick. Come on. I'm going to be moving fast. I have a lot to cover. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 5. Read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. You see that it says, My sword shall be bathed in heaven. He's talking about the judgment that will bring upon the wicked. Read. Behold, mm -hmm. it shall come down upon Idumia. He says, His sword will come down upon Idumia, the wicked. Read. And upon the people of my case, to judgment. To what? To judgment. Read. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, the blood of the wicked. Read. It is made fat with fatness, uh -huh. and with the blood of the lambs and goats, mm. and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. You see, because the Lord is going to what? Go, keep going. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozrah. The Lord is going to perform a sacrifice in Bozrah. It's not going to be a sacrifice of goats. Mm -mm. It's a sacrifice of people. The Lord is going to put people to death. There's going to be a sacrifice that is going to be made when the Lord returns in Bozrah. Bozra is a biblical name for Edom. It's a biblical name for the United States of America, Europe. Go ahead. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read. And a great slaughter in the land of Idu. He's telling you what he's going to do when he arrives. You understand? You can read the details of it in Isaiah 63. Now go back. Psalms chapter 77 verse 13 now. Okay, read. The book of Psalms chapter 7 verse 18. Go ahead. He has also prepared for him. The instrument of death. The Lord has prepared the instrument of death against the wicked. Read. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now give me the book of Isaiah 54 verse 16. He prepared the instrument of death against this white man. And against our people that don't want to repent. Two thirds of their, our people will not repent. And they're going to die in America when the Lord returns. They also, they're going to get it. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 16. This is the instrument of death that the Lord has prepared. Go ahead. Behold, I have cre created the smith. The smith is the scientist. Read. 
that bloweth with the coals in the fire. That bloweth the coals in the fire. Come on. And that bringeth forth an instrument. A what? An instrument. An instrument. The instrument is the nuclear bomb. Is the nuclear bombs, nuclear missiles, right? For his work. For his work. The Lord has prepared an instrument for his work to destroy and make a sacrifice in Bozra. That's what he's saying. Go back to Psalms now. Chapter 7, verse 14. The book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 14. Read. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity. Meaning the white man travails with iniquity. Go ahead. And has conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He conceived mischief and what? And brought forth falsehood. Because they are teaching lies throughout the earth. They are teaching lies through Christianity. They teach lies through politics. They teach lies through economics. Understand that. Read. He made a pit and digged it. And is fallen into the ditch which he made. You see that? Because they made a pit and a ditch for us. But they are going to fall into the same pit they made for ourselves. Read. His mischief shall return upon his own head. Mm -hmm. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his, upon his own pain. Upon his own pain. The Lord's going to bring forth judgment upon him. Give me Psalm chapter 50 verse 16. Read. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 16. I'm going to show you the depths of Satan. I'm going to show you the depths of Satan. Read. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 16. Come on. But unto the wicked, God says, The wicked is the white man. Go ahead. What hast thou to do to what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? The statutes of the most high God is this Bible. Because you've got Christian churches all over, and when you go in those Christian churches, what do you see? White images. Because they are pushing what deceit and lies throughout the whole earth. They now Easter is coming up. You're gonna start to see movies. Of a white man dying for black people. You're going to see that. Read. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Because they took a God's covenant in their mouth. They are teaching it in the churches. They are teaching it through the movies they push out. Read. Seeing thou hatest instruction. Because they hate instruction. The instruction is the laws of God. They hate God's commandments. That's why they are pushing gay rights all over. That's why they are pushing same-sex relations. They are pushing all men of evil. They say children don't have to listen to their parents. That's what they are pushing. South Africa has joined the bandwagon. They are also pushing that. During the time of Tabombeki, Tabombeki said parents don't have the right to correct their children. Do you, the, do you know the amount of evil that taken place in South Africa because of Tabombeki in office? When he said children, parents don't, children have rights. When a parent is correcting his child, a child the, their children, they can go to the police and report them. That's what Tawambeki pushed, that black ashy demon. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 17. Because he don't have no kids. He don't have no kids. So he can push that thing out and destroy families. You understand? Read. Seeing thou hatest instruction. Because, you see, seeing thou hated instruction, come on. And castest my word behind thee. Read. When thou sowest the thief, mm. then thou consentest with him. Read. And hast been partaker with adulterers. They've been partakers with adulterers. Because throughout the earth, they are pushing adultery. They are pushing women nakedness. They are pushing men changing into women. They are pushing all men of evil throughout the earth. Read. Thou givest thy, thy mouth to evil. Because the mouth that the white man has is the media. You understand? Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube. That is mouth. You understand? SABC. You understand? ENCA, CNN, Sky News, CBS News, CNBC. That's his mouth. Read. And thy tongue frames deceit. And his tongue frames deceit. That's why they're always accusing us of doing evil in the media. Whenever you switch on the news, they're always blaming us for something. You understand? Because he cannot help himself. Now give me that in 2 Timothy 4 verse 1. And because he has done this, now the wicked of our people, now they are taking advantage of that. Wicked black men and women, now they are taking advantage of that. They say, now is our license to sin now. We're going to use the fact that the white man is creating evil upon the earth. We're going to use it to do what? To break God's commandments. Brothers, is there another bathroom that side? Brother can go there. Okay, come on. Read it. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. 
I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. No, first Timothy, first Timothy 4, verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Now the Spirit speaks express. The Spirit is the word of God. Come on. That in the latter time. In the last days. We are living in the last days right now. Read. Some shall depart from the faith. Our people will depart from the faith. The faith of this Bible. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits. They're going to give heed to seductive spirits. Read. And doctrines of devils. Christianity. Christianity is the doctrine of devils. Christianity is of the devil. That's what the Apostle Paul is telling you here. Christianity is of Satan. Christianity is not in the Bible. Christianity is religion of the white man. That's what Christianity is. Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Because they speak lies in hypocrisy. They say Jesus is white. We just prove it. Jesus is a black man. Okay, go ahead. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Meaning what? Their mind is corrupt. Their mind is like somebody bent their iron in their conscience. So that stain of that iron cannot be removed. That's what the Lord is saying. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you can read there to them. They are not going to change their wicked behavior. That's what he's saying. Now watch this. Give me that in uh, Sirach 15 verse 20. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 15 verse 20. So what I'm showing you is. Because this white man is now ruling the earth. He's pushing evil upon the earth. Many of our people have joined with him. In the Christian church. In politics. Especially in politics. They just don't know that they've joined the white man in his politics. They've joined the white man in this evil. Read that. Sirach 15 verse 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 20. Read. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. God has commanded no man to do wickedly. Read on. Neither has he given any man license to sin. God has not given any man or woman license to sin. Just because the other nations are sinning doesn't mean we should. Just because the other nations don't give a damn about God's laws, it does not mean we must what? We must now also renounce God's commandments. Because that's what the nations have taught us as a nation. That's why when you go to the Christian church, they say, no, the laws of God are done away with. Meaning what? We can sin now freely because Christ died so we can sin. That's what they're saying. That in politics, it's the same thing. Because politics is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, another coin of Christianity. Christianity and politics is two sides of the same coin. They are all pushing the same thing. Do what you want. Nobody can tell you nothing. Nobody can correct you. Nobody can tell you don't do that, don't touch that, don't eat that. Nobody can tell you nothing. That's why in every political organization, the leaders don't tell the people to change. None of them tell the people to change. You understand? They don't teach the men and women that join their political um, parties to say, Hey, are you married? Why are you having a boyfriend? Why are you not a girlfriend? Hey, you just had a child. Where's your husband? They don't ask none of that because they don't ask or enforce the people to change. That's the problem. So that's why politics is not the way. Politics is not the answer. Politics is not going to bring our people back up. Politics is not going to rebuild our nation. ANC, EFF, DA, BOSS, or whatever all these political operation to do that none of them are going to build our nation back up because none of them require the people to change that's the problem you understand read again verse 20 the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 15 verse 20 read he has commanded no man to do wicked god has commanded no man to do wickedly read neither has he given any man license to sin god has not given man, any man license to sin i'm going to show you because what happening is this what we're reading here is our people now, because the other nations, they sin. They don't care about the commandments of the Lord. But Adam Jolo, but a little boyfriends, little girlfriends. You understand? They smoke weed. They smoke nyaube. They eat pork, shrimp, lobster, calamari. They celebrate Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. All of that which is against God. Our people, they follow the other nations because the other nations, that's what they celebrate. They celebrate birthdays. Birthdays is celebration. Celebrating your birthday is of the devil too, because celebrating your birthday, you want you, you want you, you want yourself to be worshipped. You want us to worship you. Oh, happy birthday! And some people, you ever seen some people, people in the world? You don't, you don't say happy birthday. They don't talk to you. and say no, I don't talk to you for a month. I don't talk to you for a year. Some people break up with their boyfriends and girlfriends because they did not say happy birthday, because on that day. 
they want to be they, they want to be a god to be worshipped. We're not gonna do that. You understand? To hell with you and your birthday. You understand? We don't celebrate those things. Now watch this. Give me now. Give me wisdom. Give me Galatians 3 verse 1. Because now because the nations are dead, the nations are defiled, the nations don't care about the laws of God. Now our people now, they say, no, that's our license to sin now. Read that. Galatians 3 and 1. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Oh foolish Galatians. Oh foolish Galatians. Go ahead. Who has bewitched you? Liloyele Kimang is asking. Who bewitched you? That's the question he's being asking. He's asking it. Who lawyered you? Hmm? Who bewitched you, you foolish Galatians? Because the Galatians are Israelites. Give me that in First Peter 1 and 1. You understand? Who are the Galatians? Let's see who the Galatians are. Because our people don't know who the Galatians are. That's why in the Christian church, when you say God is only for the Israelites, they go to Galatians 3. There is neither Jew nor Greek. If you ask them, why is he saying Greek there and not Arab? Why is he saying Greek there and not Mutonga? How come he's not saying Mutonga? Do you know why he's not saying Mutonga or Arab or Elam? How come he's not saying that? Because they don't know the history. Read that, First Peter 1 and 1. First book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Read. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. He's talking about the strangers which are scattered. Read. Throughout Pontus. Pontus. Galatia. Where? Galatia. Galatia. So the strangers are still scattered in Galatia. Go ahead. Cappadocia. Uh -huh. Asia. Uh, Asia. That's Asia Minor. That's not Japan. It's Asia Minor, which is in Greece. Read. And Bithynia. Bithynia. Elect. This is the strangers which are scattered in these lands, including Galatia, these are the elect of God. These are the elect. Isaiah 45, verse 4. Let's see who is God's elect. Okay. Now we go, then we're going to know who the Galatians are. The Galatians is not everybody who feel like it. Read them. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 4. Read. For Jacob, my servant, say. Jacob is the subject matter. Come on. And Israel, my elect. You see that Israel is the subject. So the elect of God is the Israelites. That's what he's saying. So go back. Go back to uh, Galatians 3, verse 1. Now we have a better understanding who the Galatians are. The Galatians are Israelites who are scattered in Galatia. So today when he says, oh foolish Galatians, you know what is not today how it will be written? Where we are, because today where, we, where are we scattered? We're not in Galatia. Where are we? We're in South Africa. So he would be saying, oh foolish South Africans, who has bewitched you? Because we're not scattered in Galatia today, we're scattered in South Africa as an example. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. Oh, foolish Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians, come on. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Read. That ye should not obey the truth. You see that the same truth that Christ was talking about in John 8, 32, that is going to make us free. He says, you should not obey the truth. What happens when you don't obey the truth? It means we are in the midst of sin. And that means we think God has given us license to sin because the nations don't care about our book. The nations are not going to care about our book. Because we seem to be expecting the nations to care about this Bible. They are not going to do it. We are the only people that will care about this book, not the other nations. That's why when we, when we cannot follow them in their folly. We cannot follow them in their folly because they will defile you. Spiritually, mentally, and physically, they will defile you, the Bible is saying. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Now watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 12. It says, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Meaning what? That you should not keep the commandments of God. That's what he's saying. Read it. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Go ahead. For the devising of idols. No, 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 no. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4, 4 verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon 4. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. Wisdom of Solomon 4 verse 12. Yeah, read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness. You see that thing? For the bewitching of naughtiness. That's why the Apostle Paul was asking, who bewitched you? Because you've been bewitched by naughtiness. What is the naughtiness? Sin. The bewitching of naughtiness meaning the deceit of sin. Read. Does obscure things that are honest. He says it clouds your judgment. Sin clouds your judgment. 
When you are in the midst of sin, you cannot make proper judgments. Read. Really? And the wandering of concupiscence. The wandering concupiscence is evil sexual desires. And the wandering of concupiscence, go ahead. Don't undermine the simple mind. Is going to undermine the simple mind. It's going to undermine your mind. Because your mind, now you're simple. You are in your simplicity. Because you are in your sin. You want to fulfill the lust of your flesh. That's what he's saying. Second, Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Who has bewitched you? He's asking. Because sin is how you get bewitched. That's why today, why do you think, why do you think witchcraft works? Why do you think so? They didn't worry about it. That's what they say. You know why that is possible? It's because our people are in the midst of sin. That's why witchcraft works. In the midst of sin. That's why witchcraft works. Because our people are not keeping the commandments. Yeah. Because this witchcraft exists, brothers. Don't think it, it exists. And the reason why it works on our people is because our people are breaking the laws of God. When you keep God's commandments, it doesn't matter how many times you can fufaga kagam suelo. You're not going to do nothing. It doesn't matter how many times the rain, when it's raining, you come with lightning, nothing going to happen because you're keeping the laws of God. The minute you stop breaking God's commandments, guess what? You're going to be loyal. Read that what you got. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 10. Read. And with all deceivableness mm -hmm. of unrighteousness, in them that perish. That's the same thing we just read in Wisdom of Solomon. The bewitching of naughtiness, the, in what? In, 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 with all what? And with all deceivableness. With all deceivableness, the bewitching of naughtiness. Go ahead. Of unrighteousness. The deceivableness of unrighteousness, meaning the deceit of sin. That's what it's saying. Read. In them that perish. In them that die. Because why? Because they received not the love of the truth. Because they don't want to receive God's commandments. They don't want to receive correction. Read. That they might be saved. That you may be saved. That's what he's saying. You're not going to be saved if you don't like to be corrected. If you don't like correction, you will not get the kingdom. You're going to die here when the Lord returns. I'm just letting you know now. You get offended when you get corrected, you're going to die when the Lord returns. It's that simple. So the Bible is the, is the whipping stick. Because God is not going to come down here and that's not going to happen. But the Lord will, will smack you with a disease. The Lord will smack you with blindness. The Lord, whatever the, the most I see fit, he will do it. That's more dangerous, right? Because you don't see it coming. You're not going to know, and you're not going to know when it comes on you. You're not going to remember. You're not going to remember, or two years ago, you were doing some evil stuff. You're not going to remember. Because we have a very short attention span. You forgot even something that happened two weeks ago. You think you're going to remember something that happened three years ago? No. Now the most says, I'm coming for you now. You understand? So that's why we need this book. That's why we need the Lord. When he brings forth judgment, he what? He has mercy on us when he does it. Understand that? Okay. Now watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 24. Now be, you know, be ready those videos now. Go ahead. They kept neither lives nor marriage. He says they, because remember, because of the deceit of sin, marriages are out of order then because of that. that that's why in, the, in, the, in, our, in our communities, marriages don't survive. Marriage is not honored. Marriage is actually looked at as a bad thing. You understand? Because who was saying, was this Nkandalak saying, the reason why we don't want to get married is because women are not virgins. Who was saying that? Penwell. Was it Penwell? <laughs> Penwell, no? Yes. He said the reason why we don't get married is because women are what? They are not virgins, right? Is he a virgin? <laughs> He's not a virgin. So he has no business actually talking about that. You see what I'm saying? So, which means that he's waiting for he's waiting for a sister who has not dealt with a man, but he's dealt with many women. This is madness. So, now what about the father of that child? who worked day and night to make sure that his daughter is still a virgin by the time she gets married. Yeah, now he wants to defile that. 
You talking crazy. You understand? Those are the people that they are not supposed to be in the forefront. Because many men and women are listening to that garbage. You understand? Now, read that. Wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 24. Read. They kept neither lives nor, nor marriages any longer undefiled. Because their marriages and their lives are not are not clean. They are not they are and they are defiled. That's what the Lord is saying. Because of what? Because of sin. Because again, you go to church, the pastor tells you, you don't have to keep the commandments. Christ died. So do whatever you want. Nobody can keep these laws. They are lying to you. They say nobody can keep these laws, but he knows exactly how to behave himself when he is at the job. What is he following? He is following the, com the, po the company policy, ne? According to the company policy, you cannot take this, you cannot take that. And they even put it in a contract. They even have workshops about it. They even do an induction. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. There's a whole lot. They know how to follow that to the T. But they say, no, you cannot keep the laws that are written in this book. Just evil as hell. Of course they can. They don't know why they don't want to do it is because it's the laws of God. Is there people have no problems following rules? No, no, no. The only rules our people have a problem with is the Bibles. It's the laws that are written in here. That's the problem. You understand? Okay. Now, read again. Verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Watch this. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Because of sin, deceit, the bewitching of naughtiness, Christianity, politics, economics these are unclean spirits by the way give me that in uh, revelation chapter 16 these things are just these, these are unclean spirits okay which are people are into read them with uh revelation 16 read verse 13 watch this the book of revelation chapter 16 verse 13 go ahead and i saw and i saw three unclean spirits three unclean spirits three unclean spirits go ahead like frog because frog is an unclean animal right come out of the mouth of the dragon they these three unclean spirits they came out of the mouth of the dragon the dragon is the white man right and out of the mouth of the beast the, so the unclean spirit that came out of the mouth of the dragon is politics no no, no it's economics through the imf the world bank and all that they are pushing that goes into what capitalism you understand they said the capitalists and all that. Yeah, that's them. The capitalists, the elites, the few that control the many, that's them. Read. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. They says, no, read that again. Read that again. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 18. The subject matter is unclean spirits here. Read. And I saw three unclean spirits. Read. Like frogs. Read. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's economics. You understand? The capitalists, you understand? those that come and conquer and colonize us and steal our resources and rob us and exploit us of the minerals upon the earth. Read. And out of the mouth of the beast. Out of the mouth of the beast. That's politics. That's what Julius Malema and them are into. Read. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's Christianity. You see that? Politics, Christianity, and what? Capitalism. That's the unclean spirit. So it doesn't matter where you run to. You understand? So you know what? They fall under that capitalist mindset. Julius Malema, they fall under what? Politics mindset. You understand? Bushiri, Butuiri Jakes, Bumboro, they fall under the false prophet. Christianity is that false prophet. These are the unclean spirits here. You understand? So, guess what? Now, the one that is pushing our people to cause, for instance, when you look at, when it talks, when you go into marriage, it returns back to the Bible. The Bible talks about marriage again. So, but our people in the Christian church, they don't like that. They don't honor marriage in the Christian church. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 24 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Read. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Watch this. 
But either one slew another traitors. Meaning what? They they what? They betray one another in these marriages. Right? Or greed him by adultery. You see that? Deceit, adult, because traitorously meaning what? Disloyalty in the marriage. Guess what? Not only that, adultery in the marriage. Stepping outside of your wife or your husband. But guess what? This is part of the unclean spirits. That's what he's talking about here. But watch this. Um, Hebrews 13 verse 4. Because marriage is no longer honored. So much so that now society is pushing our sisters on top. They are pushing the black woman on top of the black man. But then they don't do that in the, the other nations. They don't do that. But they only push that in our communities. In our nation. They do that in our nation. Read that. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 13 verse 4. We? Marriage is honorable in all. That's all I want. Marriage is honorable. In today's society, marriage is not honored. Mujolo is honored though. Because I remember... I was watching this this interview of Black Coffee on Meg G. They asked him about um, you know infidelity and all that stuff, right? The thing that he was saying, he says, no, but this is a conversation we don't want. We don't like to have honest conversations. He was very political about. It. He wasn't direct. They asked him about adultery. He says, no, but when we growing up, the uncle, my un the uncle, you know, he had maquapen. He even sent me to go and look for his girlfriend, which is true. But now, many people look, at, look up to this guy. So he says, Mina, he said, he will never be married. He made, he, 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 but yes, he will never be married, but he's having sex. You, is my point? So marriage is not honored. The reason why I'm bringing them up is because many of our people look up to them, young men and young women. So when they listen to that, what do you think they're going to do? You see, our people don't think. Yes, they are up there in the media. You understand? They are famous. But the, guess what? They have no sense. They don't understand the impact of the things they say because it affects our nation in a negative way. You understand? They don't think about that. That's why you cannot put your trust upon politicians and celebrities. Those are not leaders of the people. Understand that. You understand? Now watch this. Read that. Hebrews 13 verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable. Go ahead. And the bed undefiled. Because when you're married, your bed is undefiled. Read. But whoremongers. But whoremongers. And adulterers. Those that break the laws of marriage. God will judge. With diseases, death. You understand? Whatever it is, the Lord will bring that judgment. Now watch this. Give me now the first video. The first video I'm going to show you. A sister is saying being marriage is a, is a marriage being married marriage to her is equal to slavery this is a sister you're going to start at one minute and two seconds one minute and two second mark we're going to push up to two minutes and 20 seconds he says being married to her is equal to slavery you cannot make this up so not being married what is that called then if you're not married because when you're not married you are not you have no but you are having sex you galavanti you have no stability so what is that called then if being married which which is stability which is honor you understand so when you're not married what is that called you see the world is on nyaube the world the whole world is smoking nyaube the whole planet earth is high on nyaube okay now play the video Right. 32. Well, I'll be 32 soon. Okay. So, you want to be a traditional housewife then? I wouldn't say all tradi traditional, but somewhat, yes. Stop. Okay. This woman is saying she wants to be a traditional okay. wife, but she doesn't want to be all the way traditional. You cannot make this up. She says, I want to be a traditional wife, but I don't want to be all the way traditional. But she wants a traditional man. She wants a traditional husband as a modern woman. You see what she's, that's what she's saying. She says, I want a traditional man, but I want to take me as I am, Steve, over me and yours. <laughs> that's what she's saying. What the hell is this? Now play the video. 
<laughs> okay. Yes. But you want the man to be a traditional provider. Yes. Stop. You see how he, you see she she says it with a straight face. She wants a man to be a traditional provider, but she wants to be a half traditional, part traditional, part part modern. She's a hybrid. <laughs> this woman is a freak of nature. That's what these modern women are. They are freaks of nature because they don't know what they want. You understand? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. But you want the man to be a traditional provider? Yes. Ideally, I would like that. Okay, that sounds like an imba imbalance. I don't necessarily think so. Pres, pause you need him to be a traditional. I mean, sisters, what is wrong with you? She says, no, I don't necessarily think so. Hold on a second. She knows exactly what she's saying. You understand? Deflection. No accountability whatsoever. She says, no, I don't necessarily think so. You know why? Ostrich. An ostrich, they lay their eggs over there and then they just. You know how they move, man? The big bumps, no hair. Yeah, play the video. I really think so. If you need him to be a traditional provider, mm -hmm. but he's not getting a traditional housewife, what is he getting that? What is he getting that's better than a traditional housewife? Because mm. his, okay. his, his responsibility is here. What's he going to get that's here or above? What does a traditional housewife entail? Well, you tell me. You see what she's doing? Now she wants the brother to give her the answer. But she says, I don't want to be fully a traditional housewife, which means she would have to know what a traditional housewife is supposed to be doing. You see how they very sneaky. Play the video. Entail. Well, you tell me. Because you said you're not one. <laughs> uh, you picked the right one. You know, housewife. <laughs> I'm just imagining kind of being a slave. Pause. You cannot make this up. So, hey, imagine. You see, it's just like their own wickedness has blinded them. Because he says, I'm imagining a slave. So, that means is a woman that is taking care of a household looking after your children, educating your children, going through the troubles of education. That's a slave in her mind. You see that? Because that's what the white man told Eve in the garden. Adam is powerful. Listen, you're going to be sitting here being a slave instead of being equal with him, traveling with him, conquering with him, ruling with him, because that's the mindset. We're going to go to 2 minutes, 20 seconds. Play. Play on. That's Let me stop you right here. Let me stop you right here. Let me stop you right here. Where are your people from? Uh, my mom's from Trinidad and my dad's from Jamaica. Okay, stop. So, she's from Jamaica. She's Benjamin. <laughs> she's from the tribe of Benjamin. That's Benji right there. You can't make this up. Now, go to 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Because she says marriage is being a, being married and being a housewife is being a slave. Meaning being a traditional wife is equals to being a slave. That's what she's saying. Now, yep, 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Start from there. It's all the time with men. So, but your mother had the slave. Uh, is your mother still married to your father? Stop. Because she says... Her mother is a slave. That's what she's saying. Okay. Play it again. Play it again from uh, five seconds. Because their, their husband got the home and the kids. This happens all the time with men. So, but your mother had the slave. Uh, is your mother still married to your father? She is. Uh-huh. Would she call herself a slave? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I could ask her, but I don't know. How long did they marry? Uh, about 32 years. They got married right before they had me. Thank you very much. See, what what you said to me, what reminds me of so much of what happened with Generation 
silent generation and baby boomers. The baby boomer generation, my mother's generation, looked down upon their mother and their grandmother's generation because they had to slave for their husbands and do all this other kind of stuff. And then they realized that when they got to be later in life, that they had failed as women. They realized that every other generation of women up to them had done their jobs. They were the generation that spent all the money, sold the family houses. They're the most selfish generation that ever lived. And the ones that are still alive will tell you, we have failed as women because they're my parents. They made a generation of harder women and softer men, mm -hmm. all because they looked upon what their mothers did as being beneath them because they got a little funky piece of education, a little bit of government assistance, and were told that you were better than your man in the civil rights struggle. The only group of women that actually looks at their, the women past them as fools. But yet, now you're the most educated, you, know, you, you, you make more money, you, you're more educated than the previous groups of women, you have more options, opportunity, you're freest than ever been, and you're the most unhappy group of black women that ever existed. Mm. Stop, I don't feel that. Is they are unhappy. They are most unhappy. They are arrogant. They look down on their parents that came before them because of education, because of what being independent, because of black woman empowerment, ne? because of 50-50, because of oh wait feminism. That's why they look down upon their grandmothers and their great grandmothers because they think they are better than them because of some degree that you got, because of some little job that you got. Because you think you are educated. You think you're better than your mother. You think you're better than your grandmother. You see that? Play on. Come on. I don't feel that way because... I. The stats say that, though. Okay. You don't feel that way. The stats say that, though. One in four of you will marry in a lifetime. <laughs> okay. And you said, I don't want to be a slave. And you said, basically, you said your mom a slave. Yes, because I see that I see and and hear the way that my father treats my mother, and I know that she deserves better. Oh, you need to stay Stop your calling right there. You need so she's not married. She has no kids. She has zero relationship skills, zero emotional intelligence. You understand? She's unfit emotionally. She is unfit when it comes to relationships. She is unfit when it comes to be a grown-up, but she can actually judge her mother because of the degree she got. You understand? She thinks you know, she can actually counsel her mother better concerning her marriage. This is what it has come to. Modern women counseling their mothers about... Because modern women, as these daughters that have jobs, they are actually the ones that push their mothers to file for divorce. That's them. Because they say, no, but mom, you can do better than my, my dad. You can do better than him. Yeah, that's what they say. They are the ones that cancel their mothers regarding marriage. Because they are educated. Educated. Now, play on. Oh, you need to stay in your place. You need to stay in your place. That's right. In my place how? As a child. <laughs> That's your mama, but that's his woman. You need to stay in your place. And that's one of the main problems we have in the black community. We got kids judging grown relationships. You don't have any children, do you? No, I don't have any children yet. Well, that's my point. Mm -hmm. You're judging your mother and father from a kid's standpoint. Mm -hmm. Not that they're just individuals. You don't know what your mama does behind closed scenes and goes to your daddy, but your mama, is, your mama knows enough to have her ass in the marriage. Mm. Mm. She got more than you do. Stop. Now I want you to pay attention to this. Rewind it just a little bit. You understand? Because she's just because this woman, she's give me Exodus 20 verse 12. This woman don't don't honor her father and her mother. And they are married, by the way. And she's not. She's short, she's fat. You understand? She's rounding all over the place. Like your oros. Read that. Exodus 20 verse 12. But she's disrespectful to her mother. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's the, that's the commandment. Honor your father and your mother. Go ahead. 
that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That is why you see today children die aid young. Their parents bear, parents bury their own kids is because they don't honor their father and their mother. That's the problem. Give me that in Exodus. Give me that in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter 30. Okay. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 11. Watch this. I want you to pay attention here. Listen good. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 11. Read. There is a generation that cursed their father and does not bless their mother. You see that? She is one of those generations. That's more than women. There's a generation that does what? Read that again. There is a generation that cursed their father. They curse their father, mean, meaning what? They disrespect their fathers. Because listen, she's disrespecting her father on national television, on social media. These videos are forever. They're not going to be deleted from YouTube. You understand? So guess what? She's disrespecting her father, you understand? And her mother. She don't bless her mother, read. Really? And does not bless their mother. Does they don't bless their mother. What verse you in? Verse 11. Sir. Keep reading. Verse 12. Watch this. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. That's her. She's pure in her own eyes. Meaning what? She's holier than thou. She knows better than her own mother. You see what I'm saying? Read. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. They are not washed from their filthiness. They are in the midst of sin. Because she's supposed to be married. This sister. She's supposed to come. So as I'm sure there's many instances where her mother actually was coaching her on how to get a husband. And she came back and said, but I see how daddy treats you. Nye, 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 nye. Getting involved in what situations that don't, what, don't belong to her. Go ahead. There is a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. They, they are lofty, meaning they are proud. You understand? Read. And their eyelids are lifted up. Their eyelids are lifted up, meaning they are proud. They speak evil of their parents. You understand? Give us, read verse 17. Watch this. Verse 17. Read. The eye that mocketh at his father. The eye that mocketh at his father because you look down on your pups. Read. And despises to obey his mother. And they, disp and they hate to obey their mother. Read. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out. Uh, and the young eagles shall eat it. Meaning you're going to die. Once you die, your dead body will be there. The fowls of the air will eat you. Will eat your body. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what, when you don't honor your father and your mother, that's the judgment. You must die the death. Give me that in Matthew 15. You don't honor your father and your mother, you must die the death. This is what Christ said. Matthew 15 verse 4. This is out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Let's hear what he said. Read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. For God commanded, say, mm. Honor thy father and mother. Read. And he that curses father or mother, mm -hmm. let him die the death. That's the judgment. Drop dead and die. That's what he's saying. The most I don't play games when it comes to that. Even Christ said it in the New Testament. You disrespect your father and your mother, you must drop dead and die. That's the judgment. You understand? Now play on. Play the video. No, I don't have any children yet. Well, that's my point. Mm -hmm. You're judging your mother and father from a kid's standpoint. Mm -hmm. Not that they're just individuals. You don't know what your mama does behind closed scenes and goes to your daddy. But your mama, is, your mama knows enough to have her ass in the marriage. Mm. Mm. She got more than you do. Look at the facial expressions. Pause. What's that? You see that? She is telling her, your mother has more than you do. You know why? You know why her facial expression is like that? Her face is cracked and on the floor? It's because she's dialing, she's what? She's thinking about her degree. She's thinking about her education. That's why she don't think her mother has more than she does. But play on. What's that? A husband. Mm. <laughs> Paul, okay. you see she's laughing like it's nothing but guess what her mother has more than she does she can she can she can, cause she, yeah, she can get rod of course she can get a man but she cannot keep her husband 
Any woman can sleep with any man, but she cannot, not every woman can get a husband. That's the point. You can go out here, you will get a man to sleep with you, but they're not going to wife you. That's what, that's the point. Because you think she's still a virgin? No. Keep playing. What's that? A husband. <laughs> okay. How many, how many, how many siblings you got? Um, Pause. I have. I want you to pay close attention to what we're about to read here. To what you're about to be. I want you to listen good here. Okay. Play on. Come on. Okay. I mean, how many, how many siblings you got? Um, I have four brothers, four step brothers, uh, well, half brothers, and one like other brother. Who we have. How many? How many? How many children your mother have? Um, all six of us. How many children do your father have? Just the two. Well, now. So, hold up. Now. <laughs> So, so let me, let me, let's start. Hold on, hold on. Pump the brakes, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Mm -hmm. Yo, your biological father? Yes. Went with your mother and raised kids from another man? Uh, yes. No, no, no. Later on. Ma I did, no, I don't need your interpretation. The biology is all I'm concerned with. Mm -hmm. Your mother had children from another man? Uh, yes. How many men? My mother had children from another man. Um, two other One, men. Two other men. So your mama has three Before baby daddies. She met my father. So, so she has, she's reproduced with three men. Yes. So your father accepted mm -hmm. your mother who had reproduced with two other men and she hadn't been married to those men, right? Correct. Right. He sounds like a goddamn superhero as far as I'm concerned. That's oh, right. Lord. <laughs> that man is a superhero. It says, listen, this woman, this man married her mother who had four kids already by different men. And the mother, the father married this woman and she's one of the two kids of the father. So the father married this woman with four kids. So they've got six kids in total. Four are not his, two are his. And he married this woman for 32 years. Mm -hmm. And this woman has the nerve to be a black ashy demon. You cannot make this up. And that's the mindset of the black women today. Many of them. I'm not saying all sisters, but many of them, that's how they think. But she still has the nerve to disrespect her father for what he has done. And now it's so bad that her father married her mother with four kids, right? She has no kids. She's big like a hippo. And she cannot get married. So her mother has more than she does. What the hell is this? You see that? But she don't see that. You know why? Because her own wickedness has blinded her. That's why. Now. Um, yeah. No, that's it on that. That's it on that. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. Now, but what I'm showing you here is. that Go back to Hebrews 13 verse 4. Marriage is no longer honored in our nation. In society... Marriage is not honored. And the people that dishonor marriage, they are married, which is the other nations. Mm -hmm. They dishonor marriage by pushing that garbage to us so that we don't get married. That's why. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable. Marriage is an honorable thing in the sight of God. But in society, marriage is not honored anymore. Marriage is looked at as a slave contract. Yeah, that's what they that's what she's saying. That's what the sister's saying. You understand? Because today what you need to understand, I'm gonna the mindset of the black woman today, write this down. Number one, the mindset of today, the modern the mindset of the modern woman is this. She wants she wants the position of a man. That's the mindset of the modern woman. The mindset of the modern woman is she wants the position of a man. Secondly, that's why they call them boss chicks, boss bees. You understand? That's them. Boss chicks and all that. Why am I echoing? Am I echoing? 
Okay, read that again. No, no, no. Write that down. Today's modern women, number one, they want the position of a man. That's why they call them alpha females and boss chicks. Number two, they want the benefits of a traditional wife. They want the, they want the benefit of a traditional wife. That's what they want. You understand? Number three, they have the accountability of a child though. They have the accountability of a child. I'm going to repeat that again. Number one, they, have, they want the position of a man. They want the benefits of being, they want the benefit of a traditional wife. And they, but they have the accountability of a child. That's the mindset of modern women today. Because when you correct the black woman, she, they say you are a misogynist. You hate women. That's what they say. You understand? Now, watch this. Um, give me Jeremiah 31, 22 real quick. Read that for me. Come on. Step go. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. Read that. Step go. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Read. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Read. A woman. A what? A woman. A woman shall compass a man. They want the position of a man. A woman will compass a man. They want the position of a man. You understand? They want the position of a man. That's why they call themselves boss chicks and alpha females. That's what they say. And not only that, but they want, no, number two, they want the benefits of a what? They want the benefit of a traditional wife. They want the men to provide, to protect, to take care of them. You understand? To pay all the bills and all that. And that's something men have been doing since the beginning of time. Ne? We've been doing that. We haven't changed. Yes, Give me Genesis 30 verse 30. We haven't changed that. We've always been doing that. Providing our wife for our wives and our children. We've been doing all that. It's not a new thing. That The problem is that the women have changed. We haven't changed. The women have though. Read that. We just read in Jeremiah's, but read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 30, verse 30. Listen to the mindset of our forefather Jacob. Read. For it was little which thou hast before I came. Read. And is now increased in unto a multitude. Read. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. Come on. Now, and now, when shall I provide for my own house also? You see that? Jacob, our forefather, was always about providing for his own household. You see, men haven't changed. From the time of Genesis, men, we haven't changed. Understand that. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8. Watch this. But if any provide not for his own. If any provide not for his own. I need you to pay attention. Open the Bible, pay attention. Stop licking your fingers. Read the Bible again. Come on. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 8. Read. But if any provide not for his own house. If you don't provide for his own, read. And especially for those of his own house. Go ahead. He has denied the faith uh -huh. and is worse than an infant. You're worse than a non-believer. That's what we're reading. But our forefathers, they provided for their own household. So we haven't changed from the time of Genesis. Guess what? Even during the time of the apostles, we still did that. You understand? The problem is modern women, they have changed that. They want to be men, they want the, but they want the benefit of a traditional wife. Because the traditional wife must be married to a traditional man. But they want to be married to a traditional man, but she wants to be a modern woman. That makes no sense. You understand? Now, cue the video. The same video that we're playing, I want four minutes, 34 seconds. Four minutes, 34 seconds. She wants the benefit of a traditional wife. Listen up. You can sit at home. I didn't necessarily phrase it as that. I said that's that what I it is. Wanted a provider for the you most. You wanted to be able to work. And you wanted. I, I, I asked the question. 
I asked the question, so I'm very clear. Mm -hmm. I asked the question. You don't want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant. You want a man to be a traditional provider. I've said that three times. Okay. But how we get to it, you don't have to want to be able to, the one carrying the financial family load. You want to be provided for. Yeah. And then what is he going to get? Because he's not going to get a traditional wife. What is he going to get? He's going to get the love and support that I have. You buy a goddamn dog for stop, that. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> this woman is crazy. She says she wants a traditional man, but she don't want to be a traditional wife. So what are you bringing to the table? She says love and support. <laughs> you can't make this up, man. Love and support. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you what she's bringing to the table. Give me Proverbs 7 verse 10. I'm going to show you what she's bringing to the table. This is what, because this is what they bring to the table. When you hear women speak like that, this is code word that I'm bringing this to the table. Read that. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Read. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an hallow. That's what she's bringing to the table. You understand? To dress like a hoe. Read. And subtle of heart. She's evil. You understand? She's evil. Go ahead. She's loud and stubborn. That's what she's bringing to the table. Love and support means I'm loud and I'm stubborn and I'm, un I'm uncontrollable. I'm uncooperative. I'm not submissive. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man. That's what she's telling you she's bringing to the table. Go ahead. Her feet abide not in her house. Her feet abide not in her house. It says they are tired of an harlot. She's got a big, she's bringing a big mouth, big booty, and a big mouth. She's stubborn and she's loud. That's what she's that's what she's bringing to the table. You understand? And she's gonna be the fourth child if this man has kids. She's gonna be another child in the marriage. She's not gonna be a wife, she's gonna be another child in the marriage that the husband has to take care of. Now keep play on. We're gonna play up to six minutes and seventeen seconds. I buy a goddamn dog for that. <laughs> okay. See, you ladies don't want a you don't want a fair deal. You actually want you ladies want an unfair deal. You want a man to go out and do the things that men have always been expected to do since time immemorial. But yet, you don't come to the table wanting to even come and act in good faith. You. Mm -hmm. Women like you, I'm going to talk about you. You come in here talking about a traditional housewife as a slave. Mm. And I tell you what, you leave men alone, go get your girlfriend, but go buy a dog and live and die by yourself. That's it. I get tired of you women talking about men as though we're something to do. She must just buy a dog or a cat and drop dead by herself. That's it. What time, me? what mark are we on? Yeah, keep playing. I get tired of you women talking about men as though we're something to hurt and abuse shit because you watch fucked up social media stories. Mm -hmm. Men are tired of having you put this shit on them. If we talked about y'all like this, you call us toxic. If we said, oh, traditional housewives are some gold digger, then there'll be all kind of problems. Mm -hmm. But this is what I mean. You guys are used to talking about men in some of the foulest ways. And then say you want them. Pause. That's what you are seeing online, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram and all that. Women are speaking evil about men. And these are the same men they say they want. Not only that, the same women that speak like this about men, they have sons, by the way. Yeah, they have sons. And they speak evil about men. The son is sitting right here listening to that garbage. So when the son grows up, what you think is, what you think is, so what is, what is, does he have to look forward to? Because the same men that they complain about, they raise at home. And when they grow up, they say men and ish. But that's the son you got at home. You, you see the point? Because the same things that they say they want, if their son one day comes and say, mom, actually I found a woman, she's got three kids, four baby daddies. Three kids, three baby daddies. You understand? I want to marry them. You as the mother, you're going to be okay with that? No. But you want a man to marry you with that. But you don't want your son to go through that. I've had some sisters say, me, I'm, if he's happy, I'm going to be okay with it. I'm like, she's lying. She's lying. You know why she's lying? 
is because she wants her situation to be accepted. That's what she's saying. That's why I said subtle of heart. You see that thing? Subtle of heart. Now go to 8 minutes 56 seconds. 8 minutes 56 seconds. Watch this. Play. That. Well, well, you don't even bring the basic stuff. It's like, okay. you're like, you, like, if you had four kids, you'd be the fifth one. Hmm. <laughs> so what are the basics? That uh, This is what I really want to know. What are okay. the basics for you? Well, as first, a of, first of all, good faith. Mm-hmm. Good faith, not first of all, I think you need to go back and understand understand what it means to be a woman and a wife. Paul, if you come in through saying slow. So the brother is telling her, listen, you don't know what it means to be a woman, neither do you know what it means to be a wife. Now that's heavy. Because she's a freak of nature. She's an alpha female. How what possible knowledge could she have of being a woman? None. I guess she's an alpha female. Yes, so what knowledge will she have of being a woman? Zero. What knowledge will she have of being a wife? Zero. She don't have none of that. You understand? Yes, and these are the these are these women, these are the women that our sis, young sisters are listening to online. Yeah. You understand? Yes, Keep playing. Like, I really got nothing to talk about when we say shit like that. I think you need to hear where I'm coming from, but I want you to continue before I explain that. Pause. <laughs> she says, I want you to hear where I'm coming from. You know what she's saying? Yes, to hell with what you just said. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you how I feel about this mm -hmm. because it's all subjective. It's not fact. It's how she feels. So she just dismissed that whole thing to say, to speak evil of men. She dismissed it. She says, but I want you to hear where I'm coming from, meaning how I feel. Because that's, how we, that's what it boils down to today with modern women. Play on. Go ahead. No, I want you to continue before I explain. Well, but coming from a place of good faith, meaning that a man is something to be valued. Mm-hmm. Meaning that the most important duty or responsibility a woman has on the planet is her children and her family. Mm. You don't want to have anybody else raising your kids, feeding your kids. You're supposed to take pride in these kind of things. Yeah. You are supposed to be proud about it. Mm. Following the recipe used to be insulting to women. They made their own recipes, but that's when women taught each other how to cook. So you're supposed to write in recipes to recipe books. Not just looking on the back of a box. But you didn't but but sadly, many women today don't know how to do this stuff. You went to school, you got an education pretty much like a guy that was gender neutral and you're out here working. And then you want a man to come along and do what men have done for hundreds of years, but you're not even qualified to do what the women you used to call slaves did with joy. Mm. Oh. I'm not calling that. Because she's saying, listen, their grandma, great grandmothers and great great grandmothers and great grandmothers, they are slaves. But she's not even fit to live to be a wife. She's not fit to be a wife to a man that she says she wants. Because she says she wants a traditional man, but she's not fit to be a traditional woman. She's fit to be for the streets, yes. But she's not fit to be a wife. That's the point. That's what he's saying right there. And that's what I was that's what I, that's why that's what we use in the Bible to try to get our sisters to understand. If you don't be if you're not groomed to be a wife, you are not fit to be a wife. And if you're not willing to learn to be a wife, you cannot get married. Because guess what? You're gonna embarrass us. You'll be an embarrassment. You understand what I'm saying? First Timothy 5 14. Because the church, she don't know how to be a, what it means to be a woman, no, let alone what it means to be a wife, which is 100% correct. First Timothy 5 14. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. I will therefore 
that the younger women marry. The young women must get married. But before the young women get married, here's what needs to take place. Titus 2 verse 3. The young women must get married, but before they do, this is the steps that they must go through for them to get married. Read them. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged women likewise. The aged women, that's the older sisters. Read. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Come on, meaning because they are setting the right example for the young women. Read. Not given to much wine. There must not be trunks. Like we see today, we see grandma, wapiri miniskatele, bam short, ulo hot pen, utwere amstead. That's what we see today. Read. Teachers of good things. There must be teachers of good things. They must teach God's laws by their example and conduct. Come on. That they may teach the young women to be so. The young women that we read about in 1 Timothy 5.14 who must get married, they must pass at the hands of the older women. First. Then they can be qualified to be a woman and then be qualified to be a wife. So they must pass at the hands of the older women. Read. To love their husbands. Because the older women are going to teach the young women how to love their husbands. Because today, modern women, they say they want traditional men which they are unqualified for. So they're not going to know how to love their husbands. That's why 80% of them, they divorce. Because they don't know how to love a man. They don't know what it means to reverence a man. How to treat a man. They don't know how to do it. Because they don't know their role and responsibility of marriage. Read. Really? To love their children. Because they don't know how to love their kids either. Because they don't educate them. Because you educate your children by your conduct as a parent. Read. To be discreet. To, they must have discretion. You can't be out there discussing your dirty laundry with everybody. Lima Mago next door. Before you even sweep the yard. You're not even supposed to talk gossip Lima Mago next door. You can greet Mama Go next door. Continue to sweep the yard. You take care of your household. Read. Chased. They must be chased. They must what? Discipline. Read. Keep us at home. They must, that's why it says you must what? Take pride in taking care of your house. Take pride in you raising your own child. Take pride in all that. Read. Good, obedient to them. They must be good, obedient to what? Good, obedient to their own husbands. They must be obedient to their own husbands. Because modern women, they say they are, they say they are partners to their husbands. Yeah, that's why it says they must be good and obedient, meaning submissive to their husband. So if you say you are a partner, you are in partnership with your husband, how can you be obedient unto him? How can you submit yourself to him when you are partners? Because partners means we equal. And in the sight of God, that's not possible. Read. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Because the only time when the Lord of the... Because the, the word of God is blasphemed when... The woman does not submit herself to her husband, nor does she reverence him. She says they are partners, they are equal. She also have an equal say, just like as he does. That's crazy. The man has the final say in the house. That's what the Bible says. You understand? But modern women cannot handle that. That's why they are single. They've, they're married to their careers. And guess what? They are a deep ditch. Yeah. That's why many of them now, they go for surgeries to what? To, to sew their hymen back on. The ditch is already there. Why would you want to go and you would cover the top of the ditch, but the ditch is still there? The hell is this? You see what I'm saying? Ditch ever That's what we're reading here. That's what we're hearing on social media. Yes, I said it. Now, they have, account they have an account. They are. They have accountability of a child. Because modern women have zero accountability. Now, play the next video. Accountability. That's the video I want to play. The first video regarding accountability that I sent. It's even written there. Accountability. Watch this. No accountability from Will. Yeah. Another perspective because you said I don't care, but I don't want. I don't want a feminist perspective. I don't care about that. Go, go over, you can go anywhere else and give that perspective. That perspective has ruined our, co our community. Your perspective is no accountability for women. No, I, I do believe some women are, should be held accountable. No, 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 some, actions. all. Pause. This woman is saying some women should be held accountable, not all women. 
all women must be held accountable for their action. Look at the sister. Val Kilerato something. She was some, some, some model. Ne? The woman who accused tall as more of rape. Yeah. That woman that accused that brother. That woman, she's only seen a day in jail once, I think. Because of the court proceedings and all that. But she's out. She's supposed to be in jail. That woman's supposed to be in jail, but she's not. Because you know why? Society does not hold black women accountable for their behavior. That's why they can kill 60 million babies, you understand? And they, not, uh, they are not called murderers. They even give them rights to kill their kids. And those kids are not theirs because women don't produce kids. We do. Women don't produce seed. We do. Women, yes, they carry the seed, but they don't produce the seed. We do. A woman cannot have a child without me. You understand? So women, that, that child is not yours. That child actually, that's my child. That's not your baby. It's my baby. Because the, the children, when we're walking around, they are in me. Before you and I even lay together, the children, they are sit in me the whole time. They only get, they only enter into you when we lay together. And you, guess what? You carry my seed. But it's my seed. That seed comes from me, it goes to you. It's my seed. So it's my baby. But society seems to think, worry, no, but women, children do better with women. No, no, we've got, we've got deadbeat mothers today. They talk about deadbeat fathers. Mm -mm. Deadbeat mothers, we see them every single day in the cases. We see them in the suburbs. We see them at the malls. We see them on the taxi, in the taxis. We see them got BMW, got Ferraris, got Range Rovers, but they're still deadbeat mothers. You see a woman coming out of a Range Rover, all her children buy very bum shorts. That's a deadbeat mother. All her children are showing cleavages. We see them coca. We see them in. We see them in Midland. We see them in Sandridge. We see them in Vona Valley. We see them in Mall of Africa. Women, career women, traveling with their children. No man because she's married to that car. She's married to her kids. She's married to her job. You understand? Ukidi Mishana Lady Ben Ten. That's what we see. She's a cougar. She's a puma. That's what she is. Those are deadbeat mothers. Yes, I'm talking to you, deadbeat mothers. You better repent. You understand? Those children need a father. So for that child to be stable, they need both father and mother. And if you've got daughters, you need more you mean fathers. Because the first the daughter's first love is her father. The son's first love is her mother. Because she's looking at how her mother be how his mother behaves. He says, That's the wife I want. Because you're supposed to be that example to your son. You understand? Now play on. Should be held accountable. No, no, no. Some action. all. Yeah, but we don't hold a hundred percent of the the failures of our relationships and marriages in the black community. We're not always eighty percent of divorces are filed in black America, filed by women. Okay, that's the divorces, but what's causing these divorces? I think we can't just look at women that. filing divorce is what's calling divorce. Are you fucking kidding me? Are they are they filing divorce? Women filing divorce is causing divorce. By the man. Women filing don't talk over me. Stop, pause. You see, she's interrupting the brother because that's a woman, that's a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be fooled, brothers, by the hair and all that. She's not that's the that's that's even a weave. That's not her hair. That hair is borrowed. The makeup, hair, long nails like a like a hyena. Listen, none of them. These, these listen. Modern women, they are unrealistic. They say they want traditional men, but she's not fit to be a wife. Number one. Number two, she's not even real. She says I want a real man, but she's got fake nails, fake boobs, fake hair, fake nails. You understand? Fake eyelashes. She did a boob job. Everything is fake. But she says, I want a real man. How exactly do you want a real man? You, number one, you dress like a man, but you want a real man. 
This is crazy. Because modern women, they are crazy. They don't listen to their fathers. They don't listen to their brothers. Neither do they listen to their uncles. They don't listen to no men. No, no, they do listen to one man though. The white man. They do. You, I see, I've seen black women weeping in the Christian church for Caesar Borgia. I've seen black women praying. They be crying. Go get it again. Talk about the God, God, the Holy Ghost. But when you ask them what color is Jesus, that is white. So who's their man? Who are they married to? Yes, she might be, she might be married to you, but when, guess what? But when she prays, who does she see? She sees the white man. That's her man. That's her husband. You're not her husband. The white man is her husband. I need you men to understand this. Modern women are married to the white man through white Jesus. That's why when we say Jesus is black, they say, not my Jesus. Your Jesus might be black, but ours is white. Because her sister said this to us at camp. You understand? That's what she said. That black ashy demon, but she was ripped apart with the Bible. Me, I'm not playing. Come on, play on. Read. No, play on. Women filing divorce is causing divorce. Deal with that. Deal with that point. Did, was your grandmother married? Okay. Yes, she was. How long? Um, her situation Pause. is a little different. She's still married. Pause. You see, they cannot answer a question. How long was is she was she married? No. You see, sir, they cannot just give you a straight answer. You know why? Because there's sin in there. There's some sin. There's some evil. No men and men. Hmm. Una no men and men more. Play the video again. Rewind it a little bit. Women. Filing divorce is causing divorce. Deal with that. Deal with that point. Did, was your grandmother married? Okay. Yes, she was. How long? Um, her situation is a little different. She's still married, actually, but separated. How long? So, since she maybe was about 22, so what, 50 Pause. years or so? The grandmother was married when she was 22. But today, modern women don't want to get married. Ne? They say, I'm still young. What that mean? I still want to be my, my back to be blown up. That's what she's saying. Yep, that's what she's saying. Meaning, when then when he's dragging on the floor, now I want a man now. You see, that's, that, that's modern women. When he's hanging and drinking on the floor, now I want Jesus. <laughs> you understand? That's what they say. Is I'm ready to settle down now. So you telling us that your husband, who's supposed to get the best of you, you say, no, the best of me I've given to all these hundred men I've slept with. Now that he's tired, he's hanging, now I'm going to give it to the man who's going to marry me so we, we grow all together. You see how backward this is? This is madness. But that's the mindset of modern women. Not Israelite women. Not these beautiful sisters up in here. Wink. Now play the video. About 22, so what, 50 years or so? Women filing divorce causes divorce. Your grandmother's still married. That means she didn't but file for divorce. That means she didn't file for divorce. Accountability is kryptonite to modern women. And logic, it, just don't get it. What did you think you were going to uh -huh. accomplish by coming over here just about the same talking points? I, don't, I haven't heard these perspectives on the show yet, so I'm sorry if I missed that those talking points. These but. are the talking points. Oh, Ma'am, these are the talking points that have destroyed our community. This, all you've heard is that what you're saying is why as part of the reason our community is so fucked up. 
Okay, that's it on that. So, but what I'm showing you, the reason why she called is she wanted the, the woman's perspective to be heard. That's why she called. How long have we been hearing women's perspective? Since we was born. We've been groomed to, to cater to women since we were boys. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. You must, you must what? It says, wait, she must go in first. Ladies first. No, no, no. Men first. The, in the Bible, man comes first. That's why man was created first, then Eve. First Timothy 2, verse 11. That's why Adam was created first, then Eve afterwards. Men come first. And men are the prize, not the woman. Men are the prize. We are the cream of the crop, brothers. You are in this truth, keeping the commandments, going to war, putting your lives on the line. When they want to kick, kill us and put us to death, we the prize. That's right. Understand it. Don't be low walking around here with a low self-esteem. Mm -mm. Because in the world, women will be saying, okay, but what are you bringing to the table? No, sister. No, 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 no. I know I'm a son of God. Understand that? I'm a cream of the crop. Cream de la creme. Yeah, cream de la creme. That's us, the men. You understand? So the question is, why should I marry you? How about that? Why should I marry you? Why should I pick you? Why should I give you my name? Why? You have to give me a whole list of why should I pick you? Why should I give you my name? Why should I give my honor upon you? Why should I cover you with my name? Why? Hmm? What are you bringing to the table? Don't tell me about the things that every mortal has. Every woman has it. She don't come it missing. Mm -mm. Every woman has it when they come. What are you bringing that's different? You, you listen, you the sons of God. Yes, oh, praise. Oh, praise. Now, <laughs> what verse were you reading? <laughs> First Timothy 2, verse 11, sir. Yeah, read it. First book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. Let the woman learn in silence. Let the woman learn in silence. Go ahead. With all subjection. With all submission. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Me, women cannot teach men. Like you see, who, who Pastor Mukuba, those Jezebels. No, no, no. Those are Jezebels. Who Sarah, Sarita Jakes. Who Sarita Jakes, there's another one. T.D. Jakes' daughter. Yes, what's, his, what's her name? Sarah something. Yes, yeah, Sarah something. She's also now on the pulpit. She's out of order. Because her father's out of order. Read. Really? But I suffer not a woman to teach. Women are not supposed to teach the men. They teach the women though. They teach the children. Read. Not to usurp authority over the men. You understand? Not to usurp authority over the men. Wanting to be men. Interrupting men when they speak. Read. But to be in silence. But to be in silence when the Bible is coming out. And when her husband or her father speaks. Or her brother speaks. Read. For Adam was first formed. You see that Adam was created first. Men first. Men come first. Read. Then Eve. Then Eve. Men, women, and children. Read. And Adam was not deceived. Adam, our forefather Adam wasn't deceived, brothers. Read. But the woman being deceived. But the woman being deceived, go ahead. Was in transgression. Was in the transgression. So the reason why the kingdom fell, brothers and sisters, guess what? The great and formidable empire that was run by our forefather Adam, guess who destroyed it? <laughs> the black woman. <laughs> it's crazy because she's not destroying the empire of the white man though. Mm -hmm. Think about it. In fact, she's protecting it. Mm -hmm. The black woman will protect the empire of the white man with her life. I'll give a simple example. When was it? I think it was yesterday. Yeah, Friday. I Because uh, it's lunch. So I went to the garage because there's no shops really there where I work. So there's a garage there. I went there to buy food. I said, well, let me buy a pie. So I bought one. Okay. And the sister gave me one saviette. You know, a pie is very messy. When you eat a pie, it's very messy. 
You understand? So you you punch it, it spills out and all that. So you have to be wiping. And that saviette is so small, it's, it's nothing. I'm like, sis, give me another saviette. Okay, give me two. You know what the sister said to me? Dear fella. I'm like, what? <laughs> they are finishing. What are you talking about they are finishing? I'm giving you a simple example of the, the depths of Satan. How far she's willing to go to protect the white man's empire. She said, the saviors, dear fail. What are they made for? Because it's for us when we come and buy as, as the customers. That's what she said. I'm like, you cannot make this up. But that's what she said. That's, what, that's why when you go to the bank, they are the tellers. It's mainly them. You go to home affairs, it's them. You go to pick and pay to shop right, it's them at the tails. You go to the companies, you get hired. Who's at the HR? Who's working at finance? The black woman. They are being strategically positioned in these areas for that reason alone. Because the white man knows that the black woman is loyal to her, not to us. But guess what? You see these sisters in the congregation right here? Yes, they are loyal to us. Oh, praise nice. to the Lord. Oh, sisters, you must give your... You see, sisters are speaking now. Okay. <laughs> give, see, give, sisters, you must give, your, you give yourself a hand for that thing. You understand? Oh, praise. You understand? That's some good stuff right there. Okay. Now, um, yeah, play the next video. You're gonna re, you're gonna play from zero to fifty five seconds. Accountability. We we'll listen to this. Now, I don't know if the people can see the banner, the picture of of of, of on the on on the video. Yeah. Now, what you're looking at here is a sister. You see, she's big. Raise up the laptop so they can see. Can they see? <laughs> Sisters, can you see what we're looking at? That's the sister. You see that sister right there? Yes, you see she's big. Now, you see the caption? I'm a nine. <laughs> she rated herself a nine. You can't make this up. She don't know her shoe size. Mm. Now, play the video. Listen good. Someone in the chat wants you guys to rank yourselves one to ten. Oh. <laughs> um, so, so, so why? We're, we're, we're gonna, gonna start with me. We're gonna, we're gonna do that while I look for the super chat. So go for a second. Um, I think nine of ten. Mm. I think you're nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I'd say I'm ten ten because I love myself. Mm. Um, God loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I love me. Amen. <laughs> and. I'm 10 10. And I yeah. feel like everyone's 10 10 in their yes. own way. Mm -hmm. Like, how, we how, could be how, like, how? How? In their own way, I said. Not in my way. I'm no, like, in my own way. If everyone's a 10, then no one's a 10. Then everyone's a 5. Then everyone's average. I, I, I definitely feel like I'm 10. 10. <laughs> okay, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'll say 9 out of 10. 9, okay. Mm. Um, I'd say 9 out of 10. Um, Rewind a little bit. <laughs> I want you to rewind this. Listen up. Listen good. Um, I say nine out of ten. Right. Pause. Eleven. Hold on. <laughs> that sister with the green top. What did she say? <laughs> she says she sees a nine out of ten. Mm. Man, you cannot make this up. You can't make this up. She says she's a nine out of ten. Man, you cannot make this up. Okay, now, give me Revelation 2.24 now. Revelation 2 verse 24. Uh, hold on. I'm show, the reason why I play all these videos, you can take that off the screen now. The reason why I'm showing you all this, I'm showing you the depths of Satan. That Satan has entered the mind of the modern women so much so that they cannot see reality versus fantasy. They can't see it. You understand? Now, Revelation 2, 24. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 24. Watch this. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira. Thyatira. Okay, read. And Thyatira, 
As many as have not this doctrine. As many as have not this doctrine. Go. He's going to tell you what the doctrine is. Read. And which have not known the depths of Satan. And which have not what? And which have not known the depths of Satan. I just showed you the depths of Satan. But you haven't seen nothing yet. You, you thought you've seen it? No, no, no. You haven't seen nothing yet. Read that verse again, verse 24. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. But unto you I say, mm. and unto the rest of the Atura, as many as have not this doctrine, Read. and which have not known the depths of Satan. Because they have not known the depths of Satan. Not the doctrine, not the depths of Satan. But because why is he saying depths of Satan? Because Satan has levels. There's, there's levels to sin. There's levels to evils. Meaning, there's many levels of evil. That's why it says the depths of Satan. Meaning, you don't know how deep it goes. The level of evil that exists. I just show you the level of evil that, the, how deep the depths of Satan within the mindset of modern women. I just showed you that. Go ahead. As they speak, I will put upon you none other bed. Mm. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now jump up to verse 18. We're going to go into the depths of Satan. An example. All the videos you just saw, I'm going to show you we're reading about it right now. Read it. Verse 18. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, right? Thyatira means the church of daughters. Read. These things say the Son of God. These things say the Son of God. Christ is speaking here. Go ahead. Who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire. He has his eyes as unto a flame of fire. Go ahead. Meaning what? Because of wine. He drank wine. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. He was a black man. Come on. I know thy works mm. and charity. Read. And service and faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last and the last to be more than the first. Go ahead. Notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee. So Christ says, not only that, but it's nevertheless, I have a few things against you, church of Thyatira. Watch what he says here. Go ahead. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Because you allow that woman Jezebel. He says, this is the problem I have with you, the church of Thyatira. The word suffer means allow. He says, because you allow that woman Jezebel. Remember, the first time we hear about Jezebel is where? In the book of Kings. Jezebel and Ahab. But this is not the Jezebel of First Kings, but is the spirit of Jezebel during the time of Rome. The same spirit that exists today that the videos that you just watched, they have the spirit of Jezebel. Go ahead. Come because on. Thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. You suffer that woman Jezebel. Read. Which calleth herself a prophet. Because they want to be men. They want to be the position and authority of a man. That's why it says, which what which calls herself a prophetess. Meaning she wants to teach. She wants to be in front of men. She wants to interrupt men when they speak. She's loud. She's stubborn. You understand? Read. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. You see that? The, you know what it, this goes into? When it says to, te te to teach, she wants to teach and to seduce my servants. Whenever you hear a woman say, but me, I feel like what you are saying is wrong. Me, I feel like you don't listen to me. Me, I want you to listen to my feelings also. My feelings also matter. But do your feelings line up with the Bible? I mean, if your feelings don't line up with the Bible, you teaching. Mm -hmm. Yes, you teaching. You are prophesying. You want me to hear your feelings or how you feel. And your feelings, they take us away from the laws of God. You prophesying. You are the prophetess. Yeah. You prophesying with your feelings. I feel. Yeah, I don't have a good feeling about this. Because yesterday you did X, Y, and Z. You prophesy. You want us to listen to your feelings. And guess what? Because of your feelings, you want us to make decisions based on those feelings. And when we read in the Bible, they don't line up. Hell that Ezekiel 13, 17. This is what the Lord said when it comes to our sisters that prophesy out of their own feelings. That rely on their own, their emotions which take us out of the Bible. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 17. Read. Likewise, thou son of man, mm. 
set thy face against the daughter of my of thy people. God says we must set our faces against our sisters. Read. Which prophesy out of their own heart. They prophesy out of their own mind, out of their own feelings. Go ahead. And prophesy thou against them. God says we must prophesy against you. We, meaning what? We must correct you. When you come with something that's not written in the Bible, that's Satan coming through you. Satan is going to prophesy using you. And you're going to bring death and destruction to what we're trying to build. We're not going to allow that to take place. Understand that. Go back to Revelation 2 verse 20. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Read. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Go ahead. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, mm. which calleth herself a prophetess. Read. To teach and to seduce my servants. Mm. To commit fornication. You see that? To teach and to seduce. Remember I said, I suffer not a woman to teach. But Jezebel wants to teach. Because Jezebel wants to be in the he wants the position of a man. You understand? But she has zero accountability. Read. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. You see that? To eat things sacrificed unto idols. Meaning the doctrines that she, she comes with. You understand? And what are those idols? Christianity. Democracy. Feminism, LGBTQ, which is the fourth wave of feminism. Read. And I gave a space to repent. The Lord says, I am giving you this woman a chance to repent. Guess what? Go ahead. Of her fornication. Read. And she repented not. That's why she says, No, I'm a man. We equal. You understand? She'll be all up in your face, arguing with you because she's a man. That's not a woman. That's a man. Read. Behold, mm -hmm. I will cast her into a bed. The Lord says, I'm going to cast this woman into a bed. Read. And them that commit adultery with her. Meaning the, the people that follow this woman. Read. Into great tribulation. The Lord says, I'm going to destroy you. Come on. Except they repent of their deeds. Except they repent. Come on. And I will, I will kill her. And I will kill her children with death. The Lord says, I'm going to kill her children with death. What are the children? They have followers. Yeah, have followers. That's why you have a lot of sisters online. They've got followers, only fans, Instagram. And the reason why people follow them is because they are promiscuous. They show off their they show off everything. They have no discretion. They have no shame. They are shameless. And that's why people follow them because why? They have no discretion. They have no self-respect. And when they get corrected, they say, No, you hate women. Zero accountability. Understand that. You understand? Is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And I will kill the children with death. Mm -hmm. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. That's it on that. Watch this. Now, I'm going to go some more into the depths of Satan. The Sodom agenda. Yeah. That's another, that's another level of the depths of Satan. The Sodom agenda. You understand? Give me that in 2nd Ezra 736. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 36. Because our forefather Abraham, he prayed for the first Sodomites. He did, of course. Read them. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 7 verse 36. We don't hate them, but we are going to correct them. They are not, there is no a brother who is in that lifestyle homosexual lifestyle, sister who's a lesbian. Yes, you can repent from that lifestyle. You can repent because it's not even a lifestyle. You, but you can repent from that. But you are not going to come into the congregation and remain in that, type, in that type of behavior. We are going to correct you. Understand that? Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 36. Read. That said I, Abraham. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Read. Already said. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 36. Go ahead. Then said I, Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. You see that? Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites. Go ahead. And Moses for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness. You see that? Our forefathers prayed for the Sodomites. We pray that they repent and get their minds right because they are sick in the head. Homosexuality was classified as a mental illness. You understand? 
They changed it because the Israelites are rising now to expose all these things. You understand that? Now, give me that into 2028. Verse 68. Watch this. You might be, why am I going there? You might be wondering. The Sodom agenda, and I'm going to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring us into Egypt again. Because when we left Egypt, we walked. But now the Lord is telling us here through Moses, says, you're going to go into Egypt again. What is this Egypt, Exodus 20, verse 2? Let's see what is the Egypt. What is the Egypt here making reference to? It says, the Lord will bring you into Egypt again. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Ray. I am the Lord thy God, mm. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see that thing? So Egypt is the house of bondage. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Verse 68. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Ray. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring you into slavery again. Go ahead. With ships. But this time, we're not going to walk. We're going to be on cargo slave ships. We're going to be cargo. We're going to be transported all over the world on ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And then. When we get off the slave ships, when they transport us to these foreign lands, when they separate mother from father, you know, understand? Husband from wife, children from parents. Read. And then. Ye what, shall be sold. And then, once we get off, when, when we get off the slave ships, what's going to happen? Ye shall be sold. We are going to be sold as slaves. Unto your enemies. To our enemies, go ahead. For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. Slave women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy, redeem you. Come on, brothers, what the hell is going on now? Come on. Now give me the book of, um, give me Revelation 11 verse 8. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Read. Right? And their dead bodies shall, shall lie in the street of the great city. Their dead bodies. Talk about us, Israelites. You understand? He says, our dead bodies shall lie in the street of the what? In the street of the great city. Stop. Let's see what this great city is. Revelation 14 verse 8. He says, our dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What is this great city called? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 8. Go ahead. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Babylon is the United States of America. Babylon the Great. Read. Is fallen. Mm. That great city. That what? That great city. That great city. So what is the great city called? Babylon the Great. The United States of America. So go back. Revelation 11, verse 8 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Read. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Babylon. Read. Which spiritually. Which what? Which spiritually. Which metaphorically. Which spiritually is called what? Is called Sodom. Is called what? Is called Sodom. So we are no longer, guess what? America is called spiritual Sodom. Because America pushes homosexuality all over the world. They force countries to what? If they say, we're going to help you, only if you allow same-sex relation in your country, then we're going to help you. We're going to give you foreign aid. We're going to help you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna defend you should the, another nation attack you. That's what they say. South Africa was the third country in Africa to, to legalize same-sex relation. South Africa was the third country in Africa to do it. Okay, go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Is called what? Is called Sodom. Is called Sodom, right? And Egypt. And what? And Egypt. So America is called spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt. Because Sodom meaning they push homosexuality. Egypt because we are slaves under America today. Read. Right? Where, where also our Lord was crucified. Because our Lord was crucified where? In Jerusalem. Right? Yes, sir. But who's in, who? Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So when it says we, where also our Lord was crucified, how was our Lord crucified? Give me 
John 19 verse 15. I'm going to show you how America crucified our Lord. Let me show you how America did it. And many of our people agree with America. This great hall. Read that. That's my favorite, sir. John 19 verse 15. Come on. They've got John chapter 19 verse 15. Read. But they cried out, mm. away with him. They, they, our people, this is what our people said. Away with him. Read. Away with him. Meaning away with Christ. We don't want no black Messiah. Read. Crucify him. We must what? Crucify him. That they say away with him. We don't want to hear what the color doesn't matter. You understand? It doesn't matter whether you're white or black. Neither Jew nor Greek. Color doesn't matter. It's what you feel in your heart. That's what they say, away with him. Away with his image, away with his teaching, and away with his people too. Go ahead. Pilate said unto them, mm -hmm. shall I crucify your king? This is Pontius Pilate was a white man, a Roman. He's asking Israelites, black people, he says, shall I crucify your king? Because the Romans always knew that Christ is our king. Read. The chief priest answered. The chief priest today will be your T.D. Jakes, Ukrefla, Dollar, Bushiri, Mumboro. That's them. What, what did they say? We have no king. We have no king. Come on. But Caesar. You see that? They said we have no king but Caesar Bourget. Mm -hmm. The white image of Jesus. That's, what they, that's how they crucified him. You understand? Now watch this. Now give me the book of Revelation 17 verse 5. Because... This great city called Babylon, John the Revelator will tell you something about this great city. You understand? Revelation 17 verse 5. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 5. Read. Right. And upon her forehead was a name written. Upon her forehead was a name written. Talk about America. Come on. Mystery. Babylon the Great. You see that? Mystery. Babylon the Great. Because people don't know, don't know that America is Babylon the Great. Because remember, Babylon, ancient Babylon is what? Is in Iraq. Iraq is ancient Babylon. So therefore, it's not talking about Iraq. Because Iraq is not a mystery. We know what I, where Iraq is. You understand? Okay, read. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Because it's a mystery. Read. The mother of Halo. The mother of prostitutes. Americans in Iraq they don't allow that. In Iraq they don't allow prostitutes. They don't allow same-sex relations. You see, so it's letting you know it's not talking about ancient Babylon, because in those Arab countries they don't play that. They find lesbians, you get arrested. There's two. They find two men kissing, you get put to death, beheaded. So it's not talking about that. Read. The mother of Harlem. The mother of prostitutes. And abominations of the earth. America is an abomination of the earth. That's what you need to understand. Now give me Nahum. Chapter 3 verse 4. We're still dealing with the Sodom agenda that America is pushing. You understand? Because America is spiritual Sodom. Understand that. Okay, read. The book of Nahum. Chapter 3 verse 4. Read. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlots. Because America is a well-favored prostitute. Everybody wants to go over there. Read. The mistress of witchcraft. The mistress of witchcraft. America is a mistress of witchcraft. America, she is a mistress of witchcraft. Read. That selleth nations through her whoredoms. That selleth nations through her whoredoms. Who are the nations that America has sold through her whoredoms? That's us. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Read. And families. And families. We the families that America separated and sold. Read. Through her witchcraft. Through her witchcraft. Christianity, politics, and what? Capitalism. Read. Behold, mm. I am against thee. The Lord says it's against America. Go ahead. Say the Lord hopes. Read. And I will discover thy sketch upon thy face. Meaning what? The Lord says he's going to pamula sketches America and people are going to see the bam bam. Read. And I will show the nation thy nakedness. The Lord says he's going to show America his naked, her nakedness. Meaning her shame. Read. And the kingdoms thy shame. And the kingdoms that America did do business with, her shame. Read. 
And I will cast abominable filth upon thee. The Lord says he's going to destroy America with abominable filth. Read. And make thee vile. The Lord is going to make America vile. Is that it on there? No, sir. Read. And I will set thee as a gazing stock. America will become a gazing stock. Second Exodus 5 is 3. Watch this. I'm going to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Like Morpheus was saying to Neo in the Matrix. Take the red pill, the red pill, right? And I'll show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I'm going to show you the depths of Satan. Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 3. Go ahead. And the land. No, no, verse 2, verse 2. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 2. Read. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest. He says sin is going to be, is going to get so bad. That is, remember, Ezra was during the time of Persia. He says, listen, Ezra, what you're seeing here is nothing compared to what's coming. And guess what? We are living in those days where we're going to see what Ezra was, was told was coming. He says, it's going to get so bad, it's going to make your head spin. The amount of sin that's going to be upon this earth. Read. All that thou hast had long ago. Long ago, he's talking about Genesis. Genesis 19. In this context, what we read. Now watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 26. No, 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 no. Play the first video. The first trans video. I want you to pay close attention here. You understand? America is spiritual Sodom, right? Watch this. No, 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 no. Yeah, this one. Listen up. Actually, you know what? Play the second one to this. The second one after this one. I want you to see how deep this goes. This is the world we're living in. I want you to see the depths of Satan. Now play that. Yeah. Listen good. Now this is a man. And listen to what he says. This man. We ready? Yes, sir. Is it shown? Is the people seeing it? I want the people to see the video. Come on. Now play the video. Listen up. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. Right beforehand, you fucking said sir. Sir? Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a fucking sir. I apologize. Motherfucker. I apologize now. I need your corporate number because I'm going to talk, call them and talk about how I was misgendered several times in this store. I need your corporate number now. Get it for me now. Get me your corporate number. Well, I'm going to ask you for the fifth time to stop calling me a man because quite clearly I am not. Pause. He believes in his mind that he is a woman. Even my statement don't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> he believes he's a woman. He says, call me ma'am. The brothers keep saying, say, don't call me for the uptin. Don't call me sir. Man. That's a man. He came out. <laughs> you understand? Now play the first video. Now this is the older man. I think he's the, he's the owner of the same store he was in or something. I'm not sure. But listen to this old man. Listen to what he says. Look, look at the stature. Look at how he's standing. The one who's saying, call me man. Look at him. Now play the video. You're going you're gonna to put that up and you're going to let everybody else see it? Well, everybody but loves it. When you're confronted it. by a trans woman, you're going to hide it? Everybody loves it. No, they I don't think so. They take pictures of it. They post it. Uh -huh. Nine out of ten customers love it. Yeah, you know what? It's bullshit. No, what you're spouting is bullshit. Uh, no, it's not. Trans it women are women, sir. That sign is bullshit. I'll tell you what. Just check it out. It ain't bullshit. I'm telling you right now, as a trans woman, trans women are women. Your well, I'm telling you, as a man, that's bullshit. Uh-huh. It is, 
It's total bullshit. Okay. You know what? Nobody confronts your ass. That's the problem. Really? If they'd say, really? What the? You want to bet? What the fuck is you going on? Do you know, know how many there? people you've embarrassed at, oh, at wow. City Hall? Me and there have to, to city there hall, have really. to tolerate that shit. To the city, sir. You are an embarrassment to this. City. I am a pillar in the city. Everybody knows. I'm a pillar in this. Now oh, you yeah. do that. Do you know why? Every time some bullshit like this happens, uh-huh. my sales go up because people are wanting this. Side. Really, really, really. We're gonna show them the side of you. And you do it. You do it. You do it really answer. good. Because guess hopefully what? Hopefully we can wake you up. You are fucking nuts. Let's wake you up. You to the are truth, nuts. Sir. You're not a woman. You don't look like a woman. Uh-huh. You don't act like a woman. Really? You're fucked really? in the head. What's oh, wrong really? with you? I'm fucked in the head. I am. I am confronting you. <laughs> yes, sir. That you are an asshole. And I'm confronting you that just because I walked into your store, you felt the need to take your sign down. Well, I, I was. I cut, was thinking. I, my I was thinking I was going to. Uh, uh, be nice, what? but no. Be nice? <laughs> Putting that sign up is not being nice. Putting that sign up is fucked up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on my TV out. Good. Go for it. But you know why? Well, everybody you know knows why? before they walk in. Why did they uh, cancel Dr. Seuss? No reason at Nobody all. Nobody canceled Okay, Dr. pause. Seuss. There are tons of... Okay, that's it on that. You can re- watch the rest on your own. But you see, this old man is not compromising. Yes, no. He's uncompromising. I like this old man. Yes, you understand? I like him. I like he's telling him say, say, because nobody confronts you. Yes, sir. That's why, because because what? People are enabling them. They walk on eggshells around them. No. We're gonna correct them, that said the Lord. Be not afraid, brothers. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay, play in the next video. Okay, now this guy, his name is called, I think, Matt Walsh. He decided he's gonna go around and ask us. There was a, I think there was a pala, there was a in Congress. In Congress, they asked her, what is a woman? And the the politicians could not answer the question. What is a woman? He's like, you know what? I'm gonna make a documentary about this. And start going around and ask her, what is a woman? Because no, apparently nobody knows what a woman is. Now play the video. Now this guy is some kind of a professor of gender studies or something like that, I think. Now play that. So, so what? What is a woman? Why do you ask the question? Pause. I mean, huh? I'm showing. Listen, I'm showing you the depths of Satan. He can't just answer the question. This is the Sorum agenda that America's pushing wants to shove down our throats, not the prophets. We're not gonna be, we're not gonna follow that. You, you, when you agree with that, you've got the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is sin. Understand that? Now play the video. Now, come on. So, so what? What is a woman? Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, this is, your, this is what you do. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? A lot of like this, where you're where you're not answering. I've gotten a lot of that. So I think it's interesting that you that you say that some of the people you've you've um, interviewed have been Pause. um reluctant to answer. You see how he's sitting? That's that's the because they'll tell you you know in the CIA they watch body language. You see how defensive now he is? He's he goes, he's got his arms folded. He's sitting in. He was relaxed at first. Now all of a sudden, look how he is. Nah, uh-huh. first he was sitting in the, in the, like an effeminate position of some kind. Look at him now. Now, keep, keep going. And I think that has a lot to do with the way, the questions that preceded it and the, the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? <laughs> you just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so what you wanted I to, do. You wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so 
shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. But, but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Because well, you're seeking what we would call in my field of work an essentialist definition of gender. I think it sounds like you would like me to give you a set of biological or cultural characteristics that are associated with one gender or the other. I'm not seeking any type of definition, I'm just seeking a definition. Yeah, and I gave you... A woman has its own duty Pause. and a man... So, so, he decided, you know, these college professors cause he don't want to be fired. He's protecting his job. So he decided to go and see black men. <laughs> you understand? Crazy. Now let's see the what how black men answers the question. Play. Okay. A yeah, and I gave you. A woman has its own duty, and a man has its own duty. And a lady cannot duty the duty of a man, and a man cannot do a duty of a woman. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Can a man become a woman? You see what he just said? He just explained the roles. A man cannot do what a woman can do and vice versa. Okay, come on. Can a man become a woman? No. No? No. What about a transgender? Transgender? No. No. It will look like to if you want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your mind. Wrong. Something wrong in your family. <laughs> you see, very straightforward. He's not beating around the bush. He doesn't want to be called politically correct. He's just being honest. Okay? Play on. You want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your wrong. mind. Something wrong in your family. Something wrong in you. What about if someone was non-binary. Come again? Non-binary? Uh -huh. Do you know, like non, like I, someone is, is I, You're not a woman, you're not a man. Yeah, someone's like, someone is, is neither, there's something else, is that? I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a He's saying we have never seen Things like those. Pause. But a man <laughs> has a penis. <laughs> We've never seen that. You understand? We've never seen that. Because he that made them at the beginning made them male and what? Yeah. And female. It's very simple. You understand? Keep playing. He's saying we have never seen things like those. For a man, he has a penis for a woman, he has a vagina. So we know this is a lady, this is a man. What if it's a woman with a what if it's a woman with a penis? What? <laughs> People are laughing. Is that is that a dumb question? <laughs> Let's say if you want to sleep a woman, definitely you'll do sex. Sex with a woman. Yeah. And you f the vagina, is it? But for the man, where do you f Stop. He asked that question. Okay. Okay, that's it. Play the next video. I'm showing you the Sodom agenda. This is how far, the, this is where the world is, brothers and sisters. We are in Sodom. You understand? And America's pushing this garbage all over the world. Now play. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. It's a simple question that now terrifies politicians the world over. And it's this, what is a woman? Well, Conservative podcast host Matt Walsh, in a moment of defying intervention, has made a documentary about it, and it's called simply, What is a Woman? And it's out now. What is a woman? Can you tell me that? <laughs> well, you're at the Women's March, you must have some idea. Please, if, if one person could tell oh. me what a woman is. And this is, they are at the Women's March, marching for women's rights, but they don't know what a woman is, even themselves. Because they could have just said, 
You looking at them? Play on. One person could tell me what a woman is. You are not here for women. We ask you to leave. What is that? A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. I like scented candles. And I've watched Sex and the City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? That's a great question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? Pause. I guess. Pause. Because I got now, this old man is the one we just watched. Oh. <laughs> I like this old man, man. Listen to what he says. Rewind a little bit. <laughs> yeah, play. I like scented candles. And I've watched Sex and the City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? That's a great question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? I guess because I got a dick. Can a man <laughs> become a Both. woman? Is he so direct? Is so refreshing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a lot of cussing in some of these videos, so just be mindful. Okay, play on. And become a woman? <laughs> I'm not a woman, so I, I can't really answer that. <clears throat> women only know what women are. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? You want to tell us what a woman is? Mm. Well, Matt Walsh joins me now. Matt, great to talk to you. It's a, okay, it's that's a it fascinating doc. I mean, she asked, she asked a good question. So can you tell me what a cat, are you a cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? She walked off. Mm. You understand? Play the next video. So. Now, now, this one right here, this was a classic. Man. This one, classic. Pay attention. This is a black man who decided to wear, uh, you know when brothers go to the streets, they be wearing things advertising? Yes. Yeah, so he went to the streets and says, what? He went, he, there's a viral video. He said he wants people to address him as a white lesbian. He's a black man. He supports one man, one woman. But he decided, you know, this gender nonsense, gender fluid and whatnot, listen, it's all, it's, it's a mental illness. So let me go and address this thing practically on the streets. And now he's going to be met by a gay man. Listen to the conversation. 